Queenan will be here. He will just be portrayed by myself tonight as our Queenan is out doing theatrical things for the next two weeks. But as a quick reminder of what happened last time, the party were still sort of processing their defeat of Seltradot. Um, Bosric was given a new sword completed with incredible skill and masterwork by Gelnus. He created a piece of extreme elegance, and then it was enchanted by Clo well, consecrated by Clovis with the power of Gen of Garashi. Almost said it was consecrated by the power of a demon. That's not what happened. The power of Garashi. And the party decided that in order to combat the nightmares that were getting increasingly worse and potentially bringing in a new entity, they needed to seek help. So they went with a peaceful mission to see Herr Folger and were attacked by automatons who seemed able to travel with magnetic force. Upon defeating the final automaton, Herr Folger presented himself and said, Apologies, I had to make sure you were worth my time. So, we bring ourselves back to the woods where the party is faced with what most of them can see as a middle-aged man in a long brown coat carrying a hammer that looks far too large for someone of his frame to carry. Um, he has a metallic breastplate that can be seen under his long brown coat, and he is wearing fingerless gloves. And he looks at you with a smile and he says, Guten Herren. What can I do for you? Oh, Fosher, good to see you again. Um, also, excellent work on those. <laughs> they get the job done. Yeah, they are not my finest work, but they do what they need to do. They keep out the rabble and things like that. So. Uh, well, long story short, it appears that uh, the lady in black has, uh, shall we say, gained an unfair advantage she after, the, uh, after the fall uh, of yes. Seltradot. Nalicea, yes, yes, yeah. Unfair advantage, you say? Whatever do you mean? Are you uh, familiar with her patron? As it is. Oh yeah, show it on the, the Lord of the Nightmares and things like that. Well, apparently he got a bit of a shot in the arm. Because now he's able to exert his influence here. Which makes... Which makes her a priority now. Yeah, that would be a problem, I suppose. But, uh... What exactly do you want with me? Oh, we were uh, wanting to know if you had any insight as to, uh, uh, you've been here longer than us, interacted with her more than we have. Um, Air Folger makes a face, and he, uh, looks around. This, uh, smell of mold and damp is murders with these senses. Would you like to uh, come into my home? Perhaps have a spot of... You have a child with you, uh, tea? Certainly. That would be wonderful. I'm going to start tapping on some of the metal, like... What is this? Is it metal? Yes. This is, this is one of the, the lower forms that I have made. It's simple iron. Hmm. Can I but keep... the galvanism was something, was it not? What? What? what, say, what? Sorry? The galvanism, the... Uh, how you say uh, the attraction the electrical attraction between your armor and their hand yeah it was something was it not and he's got like a big like praise me like smile on his face i i, I, I can't it, remember it, it, I, I sure can't it sure uh, it sure got the better of us um it, it was times. it was interesting um can i keep some of this uh there's a piece oh yeah you could have uh that one and you can see where he's pointing because of your blind sense. Yeah. And I'll just uh, start uh, feeling it out and just... Uh, ah. 
and I'll bring out my hammer, start breaking mm -hmm. off a few pieces because it's uh, it definitely. Uh, I, I want to double check, make sure there's nothing special about it. Um, Countess is a man who appreciates good metal work. And is rather skilled I can, himself. Uh, I could uh, gather that he is uh, the blessing of the forge. Uh, you travel with the mother heart and Adiva, it seems. Very good stuff. Yeah, now I do. Now I do. I'm going to start heading over to where I saw the anima fade from uh, that heart. Okay. And I'm going to start um, feeling around for it. Okay. As you... Um, as you are like breaking off pieces of the metal, Folger sort of rubs his eyes and brings up a fist and opens it, and the you all see the automaton just disassemble. The biological parts of it fall to the ground and immediately disintegrate, and all of the metal pieces are just sort of circling Galnus as he walks, sort of orbiting him. It's much faster as he's way down it. Uh, no, I, I, appre I appreciate it. I haven't been called darling by anyone, though. Um, no, I'm looking for a piece. Um, I, uh, I hit one of them. I'm looking for a piece. Oh, I think, Zia, you got that one, right? Yeah. Oh, did you, you need, need it? it? Oh, um, not necessarily. It just seemed interesting, and I didn't want it to get lost in the battle. I didn't know these were Folger's stuff, so. Oh, um, well, I mean, Bosrek's carrying around the head, and... I severed that. I just wanted that as a keepsake. But if you have a use for it, I don't. I don't see you, you could make oh. use of it. No, I just, I just thought it was cool, <laughs> and she'll hand it to you. Oh. Um, Folger sort of like takes the hammer off and just boom, slams it into the ground, and he walks away from it, and it stays completely upright on the ground. It has a round head. This is physically impossible, but it's doing it. And he walks away, and he says. An intact animus. Well executed. Who who did this? You said you knocked it out of one of my automatons? You're you're muted, Galnus. Oh <laughs> uh yeah, um out the back, uh through the front. Impressive fuck. A blacksmith and a foria. Quite a specimen. All of you are quite Quite something. I had help. These are uh, these are lower level automatons, but they are not something to be, uh, how you say, uh, fucked with. Mm. You did a very good job. Much obliged. Appreciate it. And I'm gonna just uh, is does this look like uh, w w give me like a uh, does this look like a clock? Does this what is this? Uh, mm -hmm. It looks like a clock without like if you just like saw the inner workings of a clock without like the wooden housing. That's what it looks like. As I'm running the gears, I'm gonna get like, I'm just gonna smile. Hmm. It won't be a whole lot of use unless you can find a source of power, which of course I can generate myself. But uh, I'm sure you can figure something out. I'm gonna wiggle one of the the cogs, and I'll pull out a tool, and just tighten the cog. And then I'll just start running it again. Oh, this is our new Smith friend, by the way. In case you're wondering why there was another person. Oh, I I know who he is. I you think I would allow you to uh, walk around here without keeping some kind of an eye on you? Oh. After all, this is the man who beheaded Arania Selchadot. This is not an easy thing to do. One must know people like that. I had help. Oh, no. Orange is certainly power. Yeah. yeah. So is tea, no. and it is awful out here. So, spit him out, and he turns oh. around and walks away. Y'all can drink in front of these guys. Drink in front of me, so it doesn't just have to be tea. I'm, I'm not. I childish. I okay. drink all the time, and I'll just take a, another drink from my Hell, I'm my flask. Right now. <laughs> but yes, inside. So, mm -hmm. Clovis immediately starts following him when he mentions inside. 
Um, Galvis, as you bring the flask up to your lips, it doesn't quite make it because you feel the flask pulled out of your hand as Folger holds up his hand and he... Do not drink this piss water. I will fill your flask with something better at the house. And then he walks away with your flask. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's just your sword. is in the metal and, and that was, alcohol. That was my friend's favorite drink. I'm good. He lets it go and floats it back to you. Your friend had terrible taste. Yeah, he did. But I will not trample on the memory of a fallen friend. Far be it for me to do that. Does that strike a chord? Sorry, that's such a... Wow, I shouldn't have asked that. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, he sort of, like, narrows his eyes at you and then says, Yeah. When I arrived in the hamlet, like many of the others, I did have friends with me, and they, unfortunately, were not up to the task. Hmm. Something we can all relate to. Did you kind of give, giving Zero look like, Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, I know, that was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Did your... Zero, Zero has only ever known communicating with siblings, so shit like that is just the weather to her. <laughs> so she, she went, oh no, that's not a normal thing to socially ask someone. <laughs> what were you asking, Gildas? Um, yeah, that's funny. Did your friends send you away too? Nine. Uh, my friends died in battle. Um, I was able to escape and defeat our four, but there was no saving them. Sorry, and I'll raise my flask and drink. Nine, it is how you say many years ago. It's a thing of the past, and I've learned much in the absence. Solitude, I have found, is a wonderful catalyst for creation. He's walking as he's talking and assuming that you are following him. I mean, yes. I found that uh, loneliness creates anger and rage. Yeah, but you were not alone, were you? You had the, uh, the entities in your lantern. Didn't quite understand until recently. Yeah, I understand that. I'm kind when of I was stubborn. But... <laughs> I can see that. When I was but a, um, a young lad, I uh, had a proclivity with uh, flashes of genius and things. And I always attributed it to study or just, you know, a random happenstance, but I also had a patron whose name I did not learn until many years later. You are... Uh, she had, a, I think, a different name when I knew her, but uh, you would know her as the clockwork goddess uh, Kimion? The, the owl-faced one. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. Uh, does that mean anything to me or no? No. What were you saying, Clovis? Uh, I'm curious. What was her name back then? Her name's in... How did she present herself to me? Um, I believe she called herself Tanra. Hmm. She came to me as an assistant. Uh, just... Uh, an owlkin, which, of course, you know, working in the, the shop, an owlkin was nice to have. Mm. And it was not until many years later that I realized it had been the goddess all along. <laughs> um, and at this time, you you come to uh, the Manufactorum, and sort of beside it, there is an elegant mansion. And he says, I only have one rule in the mansion. You must take off your shoes before you come inside. Um... You, uh, the, the one in the, the special cloak, uh, Zia, I believe it was, um, there is a, a brush area, if you could, didn't mind just running your hooves through it one or two times. I'm very particular about dust in my house. Okay. Oh, question for you. What happened to Dr. Friend? Dr. Friend. That 
old chestnut was unfortunately slain by the very woman you were trying to fight. They were a bit of a competition, you see, and uh, she thought she could make better use of him. He was always so entertaining. Oh yeah, he was very entertaining, but... Um, well, he was also a source of uh, a broken psyche, and when one draws their power from fear and those that are broken, he was like a battery to her. That's very good to know. You guys would have you you would have loved you would have loved Doctor Friend. Uh, it was it was it, it was definitely a f interesting, fun person. Um, so as you're walking, um, as you're walking up to the house, as you get closer, standing in front of the house, you see a seven foot tall statue, uh, that appears to be made of, um, a very fine silver metal. Um, doubtless you can't quite recognize the metal because of the way your eyes work, but to the rest of you, it looks almost like platinum. And it is standing there holding um, a great sword and looking out with, of course, like it just looks like a suit of armor, like maskless or like eyeless face. But you see in its chest, um, there is a glass, a piece of glass that's sort of frosted over. And as you walk by, you can hear a very, very slight and slow. An interesting statue there. Oh yeah. Um someone tried to invade my home without in an invitation, and now they stand guard. Hmm. Can somebody describe it? Yeah. Um and Clovis will explain it to to Galvis. Um, Galnus, with that explanation, um, it sounds like platinum, but you're a blacksmith. Platinum is a terrible thing to make armor out of. It's soft and useless. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, with that, I would say, why not use a stronger metal? How do you know I did not? It's just really shiny. May I? am a master of metal. You may. And I'll go up to it, and I'll start kind of tapping on it, and I'll take out some tools and kind of just... See if there's any flex, see if there's... Um... Um, when you tap it the first time with the tool, it rings out like a perfect, like, boom, note. Um, this is a metal that you have seen before, but very rarely, because it is a very rare metal. It is called sky iron, and it is metal, it is meteoric iron. And he has built a seven-foot statue out of pure meteoric iron. And, and I will... Uh, and I'll tap it two or three more times just to really feel it out. And How did you get so much? I'm not going to call it by its name. He's just, how did you get so much? Too many questions, my young man. I have my face. That is a very, very expensive statue. Yeah. And you notice this Galnus is an expensive because expensive man. <laughs> you you <laughs> can see um, looking at where you've struck it. There's not a mark on it. Yeah. And as you guys with like actual vision look at the statue, there's no blemish. Like not a scuff, nothing. Hmm. Resilient. Yeah. I'm sure it makes a great to... defender. Stands up to fire, weapons, magic of all kinds. It's a rather ingenious piece, if I do say so myself. Hmm. Aren't you, Leandros? And he taps the back, and you sort of, you swear you hear, like, a pained groan. But it could just be the metal moving. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to say I, I call bullshit on that. I know that metal ain't moving. <laughs> <laughs> uh he um he opens the door and uh using his free hand uh welcomes you inside. 
Boz almost sure. ritualistically makes sure he's he's got no guys taking off his shoes. <sighs> shoes on the doorstep. Is there some sort of cubby inside? Oh yeah, there's a there's a place just inside the door for you to store your shoes. I'm not a Thanks. monster. I don't want you to walk around barefoot out here. Uh Clovis will take his shoes off. He'll, he'll kind of see Boz like fully dusting down and, and give himself a a couple. Get <laughs> get some spores out of his hair. <laughs> I've I've got quite a bit of hair. Um, I can I can like brush it out if if need be. I don't mind being out here for a little bit. Nine. It's it's not that big a deal. It's just shoes pick up so much dirt and other unwanted things. I'll take off mine. Uh, Queen and Will, who has been. Characteristically quiet, also walks in and takes off his shoes. Hmm. Like, Quidditch always quiet, but he seems sort of stunned by the whole situation. Yeah. <laughs> almost, as, almost as if his mind is elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Must have gotten punched in the throat by one of those uh, golems. Probably. Um, so, as you guys make your way into the house, um, it is. A beautiful house you see that um as you're walking your feet don't make noise even though it is like a wooden floor um galness for the first time you you can feel metal around you like it is everywhere it is um it's lining the walls it's lining the floor it seems like his entire house was forged of metal Now, the rest of you cannot see this because it is very mm -hmm. well hidden in the disguise, but Galmus can feel it. Mm -hmm. Do you entertain often, Herr Folger? Nine. Not many people want to come up here. They do not trust me. They mm -hmm. think I'm going to turn them into one of those things, which I suppose they are fair to not trust me, but mm -hmm. don't worry. I'm not going to turn you into a robot today. I figured if you were going to, the process probably already would have started. He leans closer. How do you know I did not? <laughs> <laughs> and then he just laughs and walks away. Hmm. Uh, what's it? What's it look like in here? I, obviously, there's a. It's got a nice floor, but like, what's the decor? Um, it's honestly, it's a little Stygian. Like, there's not a whole lot going on, like decoration wise. Um, it's well lit. Um, but you notice the candles are flameless. The light seems to be constant. And as you get a closer look, the flame at the end of the candle isn't a flame. It's a flame-shaped piece of glass with a bolt of electricity running through it. Magic. A nine, my boy. Science. But I could see how you would seek that. Hmm. Interesting. Electricity has many wonders that I think your world has not touched on yet. But then I have been here for a very long time. Powered in the same way, I assume, How long your have you automata been were. Uh, yeah, powered in the same way. I have been here, or oh, you'd think one who had been blessed by the goddess of time would know time, but one loses oneself in the shop. At least a century, probably a bit more. Closer to two. Long enough to have known Fred before he was killed. Is there a lot of wood in here, or is it all metal? This is paddling. There's wood on the floors, wood on the ceiling, and the house made of metal would be very hard to keep warm or cool. But most of the house is metal. If you put a light charge no. through it, you could probably heat it. Perhaps, but if I put a, a charge through the metal, it could uh, disrupt the, uh, the help. And you can see that he has, like, automaton servants that are just, like, kind of, like, whizzing around doing things. And he leads you into the only, like, nicely decorated room. Um, it has a fireplace 
which um, is it does have a fire in it with crackling logs. Um, and seats that aren't like ornate, but they're nice and comfortable. And as you sit in them, it's probably the first real comfortable seat you've sat in for a while. Um, and uh, he uh, pulls back the sleeve of his arm and you can see that from his wrist to his elbow, it is just covered in uh, what looks like armor, but may just be a piece of metal. And he uh, taps it a couple of times and you can see thin volts of electricity pop out and uh, four automatons come in um, with uh, three of them with drinks and they give one drink to each of you and one drink to him and then another one with like a plate of little like biscuits that, that just sits down. Um, and he takes a seat and sort of just like lounges in his chair and like he is sitting sideways in his chair like Gaston style and just leaning on his hammer. So, what questions do you have for me? Well, in general, we were looking for insight about, um, I'm sorry, my tusk is really hard to pronounce her name, uh, Lady in Black, as she has now become the priority for elimination so that she doesn't bedevil the entire uh, hamlet with Shotan's power. Well, I do not know if that insight I can provide. We don't, we're not really on speaking terms. I was much closer to the others, and was rather fond of Dr. Fern, and when she killed him, it sort of ruined any friendship we might have had. But, I know that her house is the source of her power. I know she was a doctor before she came here. A scientist of some skill, if I am to understand. Not with magical working or galvanism as I am, but with... Uh, Herbs, potions, uh, alchemy, that sort of thing. I believe uh, Leandros would have had more insight, but I'm afraid he's not really in a talking mood. Understandable. A house, you say? Which likely means yeah. the house would be... Which likely means it wouldn't be as simple as simply burning it down. Oh, well. Well, many have gone into the house. Um, the house seems to repair all, repel all attacks against it. Uh, gunfire, regular fire, lightning, magic. It's, there is something perfect protecting the house. Those who go inside speak of horrible constructs attacking them, or horrors from their first nightmares chasing them from the house. If they come back at all, which if I'm honest, is rare. So, um, it seems like, well, I guess, it seems like us killing, um, Seltridat potentially led to her getting some power back. Is there a way we can take that Take that back down a notch? Well, the way our power works, as far as I'm to understand, is there are four of us to keep the balance. When one of us is destroyed, the other three grow stronger, and then if one of us is destroyed, the other two would go stronger. What are you keeping the balance of? Well... We are here to enforce that the thing that lives below this village cannot leave. And to do that, we have to feed it fear, occasionally people. It is not, I suppose, what you heroes would call the best way to do things, but it is a task that was set by us by the Dreadmasters, and we do not go against them. They are creatures older than the gods, creatures older even than the Mother Hearth. I'm not a hero. Nine, but you are acting for the greater good. Why not just destroy it? You think we would not have done so if it was so simple? It cannot be killed. 
And the Dreadmaster's worry is that if we did kill it, it would reform itself in a place they cannot control. So we keep it alive and trapped. It is beyond even them, then. So, what Well, not we... beyond them to trap it here, but that did require a great deal of work. If, if you all trap it, then what's the point of the the orbs? The orbs are how we hold our power. They are pieces of the thing's power. So why does the matron want them back? Because the matron is also strong, but the matron cannot protect her people from it. She believes that perhaps with the power of the creature, she could destroy it, or they could destroy one another. And I'm sure it would be as simple as just giving her the orbs and letting her absorb the power so they could destroy another and we can go home, but... How you say power is... Well, I will admit addictive. I don't want to go back to who I was before I had all this strength. And I surely doubt you Elizabeth wants to go back. Gretos, that simpering fool, would go wherever the matron told him to, but... Rather fond of my power. Why doesn't the matron just ask Gretos for the ore back, if he'll do anything she says? Because I think that Gretos thinks that as long as he is strong enough to protect her, that is what he must do. Gretos is not a very trusting creature. He uh, he had some falling out with a young woman in the world's it was. Hmm. That'll happen. <laughs> yeah, this is complicated. Hmm. And I'm just going to take a drink. Well... That is why I put my stock in machines. Machines cannot deceive you. They cannot betray you. They cannot even think beyond what is programmed into them. Mm. Flesh is weak. Metal is strong. What's your... What's your long-term goal? If you don't want to give up your power and you're just going to stay here. To create a weapon strong enough to destroy the creature. Mm. Perhaps destroy the matron herself. And... Take control of the region. To become the preeminent power of the Hamlet. Yeah. What would you do with that? Well, for one, I would take all those simpering fools down in the village and I would turn them into a more perfect form. It would be good for them. They do not need to live with such fear. Then I would be content with my metal paradise. You don't sound too if, unlike what's under the city. If your ascension could be achieved, and in that process, those who would wish to leave could leave, thereby giving you your paradise, would you be amenable to letting people depart? Yeah, perhaps if they did not truly see the glorious oneness of this. Would you be willing to let people enter? I'm sure there are some in it the, is a hamlet. the world that was. Who might oh yeah, if they wanted to come in here, I mean, I would need no subjects. There's always going, I will never achieve perfection. I know that as well as anyone. Science advances far too fast for any mortal being to achieve perfection, so I would need no subjects and no experiments. I hope you did not hope to find me a good person. This place twists all good intentions. And if the road to hell is paved with good intentions, then the devil am I. And he says with a smile. Well, you've certainly been a far more uh, cordial than the other two we've met, so we, th we thought it best to uh, remain in your good graces. Have I been? Was the Seltrodot not willing to allow you to stay 
leave, not fight at all? Her daughters were a problem, yes, but they were children. Irenia always carried herself with certain grace. Irenia understood what was going on here. And Galnus, you can't see it, but the other three of you can see that he is making pointed eye contact at Galnus when he says that. Oh, can you repeat the statement? Um, he says Seltradot understood things better than anyone what was going on here. Seltradot was, I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was essentially that. Yeah. I'll say, as you're talking about Seltradot, I am, my fist is tightly balled. I think uh, <laughs> seeing this exchange, uh, Clovis will pipe up and say, I do wonder, Herr Folger, if power is what you seek, and surely by your own admission it is, why did you suffer the other three? Why why, why have you not claimed their orbs for yourself? Well, that is the curse of the Dread Masters. We cannot act against any of the others. Hmm. We cannot gain power for ourselves. Power must be given to us. Interesting. I take it then that um, you don't suffer Elizabeth's dreams the way that we do. To suffer dreams requires one to sleep. Ah, and I don't even that, that. Oh, yeah. Sleep is for mortals. Hmm. Also, and he knocks on the walls and you hear that same boom. There is no magic that can penetrate these walls. So even if I took a little nap. Is that intrinsic of the metal that you used, or is there some sort of... Nine. There is a generator in my manufacturum creating a... I suppose an electrostatic pulse. Hmm. That keeps me safe from the magic. It is not unsimilar to your... Uh, the spell circles you have used on the inn. Hmm. Which I must say was very annoying. I couldn't keep an eye on you any longer once you put those up. <laughs> you should Apologies. Shat. It was a uh, measure against Elizabeth. No, uh, no ill will towards you, I promise. And one of you carries an artifact. The tall one. He has a bit of Sura's moth dust. Mm. Have you been passing this around? And uh, Queden kind of like holds onto the necklace and sort of shrinks a little bit. <laughs> no. Nine, then. Selfishness can be bred. Interesting. Probably more of a response to his own personal fears. But I don't think team, any of us pushed him on it because he is a incredibly valuable player. Um, it is important to keep him at his best. But for a team to work properly, everybody has to be trusted. Everyone has to be at their best. Quidin says, well, well I, um, I, I'd be happy to give it to anyone who needs it. I, I, I've i had three good nights of sleep. I think I would be all right for one. He did offer. And honestly, after the night I had last night, I'm happy to take next shift with the moon dust. He doesn't miss a beat and just, like, pushes it into your hand. I, oh. Yes, yes, of course. Working on my uh, need... Queen impersonation. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> it's not as good as my Clovis, but it's not bad. <laughs> no need to do it here. We're in Herr Folger's presence, but we can come up with some sort of shift system. With this. Oh, yeah, no need to do it in my presence. I'm not, you know, what am I, chopped liver? Well, you're the man of the house, and to sort our own affairs in your, in your uh, when we're requesting your presence is... Rude. So, yeah, but you are guests, and I'm in a break from my work, so do, you, do your business. Do you have nightmares? No. He doesn't sleep. And oh. the walls of my house are protected against magic. Hmm. Well. Uh, hopefully we, we can deal with, uh, hopefully we can deal with the lady before show Ten decides to take that as a challenge. Hmm. He is welcome to try. And he tightens his hand on the hammer and you all feel, like all of you feel, the gravity 
that he's hot. <laughs> I mean, it's moment. obviously yeah. you feel like he's hot, uh-huh. but like as he grips the hammer, like you can feel like a shift in the gravity. Like it, it it's hard to hold yourself up. Mm-hmm. The weight of his sexiness is burying us in our chairs. I, the, way, yeah. the weight of that Ooh. hotness, yeah. <laughs> Damn. What kind of weapon is that? That's what I want. It's just a hammer. A simple tool. A hammer's more than a simple tool. Oh yeah, but so we're so we're staying the night here. May I? No. You may try. Uh, yeah, you may stay the night here if you'd like. But um, yes, you you may try. What um, are the? That's going to be a sixteen rules? plus. What do you want me to? Uh, go ahead and add your strength. That's going to be a 21. Okay. Uh, you, he lets his hand off of it and you pull and you pull and you pull. It does not move. Mm. And then he puts his hand back on it. And, uh, and as soon as you let go, just sort of like gently lifts it off the ground, puts it on his shoulder. Mm. Simple tool. A simple tool. <laughs> Oh. Did you make the one that the uh, the alpha of the lichens uses? One of them, yeah. The other one used to have a sword. He lost it, so I gave him an axe. Hmm. I've only met the hammer one. I'd only seen him briefly. Oh, I know. He's spoken of you. Really? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Do they, uh, do they speak common? Do they understand common? They do not speak often. We we heard one talk one time, didn't we? Um, That's out of character. Yes, they do speak. They just don't speak often. He said. Yeah, it was like it was like a limited, yeah. but I remember he was like walking to the matrons and he said something mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like a quick sentence or two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Buzz. You saying something? Oh no, um do you have a power like a small power source? Something like uh, to just make the gears move. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and he whistles and he says something uh in a language none of you understand. Um and an, a robot comes back in and he whispers some things to it and it goes out and it comes back with a small um blue um, octahedron. Um, so to stop using big words, basically a blue D8. Um, and he hands it to you and he says, just uh, put that in the middle. You find a, a, sl- a socket for it. So I'll feel it out and I'll put it in. And the second it starts going, I'm just going to smile and close my eyes and hold it. Okay, uh, you can feel uh, kind of like a feeling similar to a heartbeat when you're checking a pulse coming from it, but it is a very mechanical sort of like electrical pulse. And there's a, a very like gentle static as your hands are against it, as if it is trying to give energy out. Yeah. Thank you. I haven't heard this in a very long time. You are familiar with clockwork then? I will take out... Um... So I'll go into my bag and uh, I'll rummage around a little bit and then I will bring out uh, Gearfried's watch. And it hasn't worked in some time. Do you want it to? It belonged to somebody important to me, yes. Would he want me to fix it? I don't want to touch any of the things that are important to you. He'd want his machines to work. So he holds up his hand and he balls it into a fist and you can feel that static coming off of the clockwork and he opens it again and the you watch the watch disassemble in front of you and all of its pieces. It's like, oh, it's missing a few things. Uh, and he just starts like twisting his fingers in the air and you can see the watch being rebuilt in the air. And then he snaps his fingers and it closes back together and you can hear the gentle of the pocket watch. 
and I'll I'll put it on my wrist. It's uh, it I'm I'm like in the last two rungs because my wrist is far thicker than uh, uh, Gerfried's was, and I'll just thank you. Yeah, your friend has an elegant timepiece. Yeah, well, most of what was left of him was this and uh, his tools, and in my uh, my apron. His tools are hanging on his apron. Hmm. I don't have the gift or the fingers for it, so I never tried. What happened to your friends? They encountered Seltradot. That does explain the, uh, the animosity I feel off of you towards her, I suppose. It's a shame they did not come to me first. But you weren't time, here. I was going to say I may not have been here. You said about a century, maybe more. This would have been 200 years ago, about two, 202 maybe. Well, then it is a shame I was not here. Perhaps I could have given him the strength to defeat him. Her. Them. That's my fault. The creatures. It's my fault. They sent me to get the strength. I didn't make it back in time. Well, you are welcome to uh, stay in the house. There are rooms across the hall for you to sleep in. I, again, I do not entertain often, but I always like to be prepared. And those who come for experimentation, I like to keep them comfortable before. It helps ease the process. Do you have any, do you have any doors that have like pits under them or anything like that that we need to be aware of? He, like, contemplates, like, for a solid minute. Like, you can almost hear the gears turning his head. And then he smiles. Did you open the locked door in Sachidot's house? Towards I the snoop. east wing? I snoop. Yeah. There is no doors that are going to lead you to a drop. But there are some doors that if you go into, you will probably be killed. Do they have any sort of... Warning <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They're on the second floor. Who? Also, the I, think, floor. I think maybe just, the don't, just don't go exploring. Oh, that's my respect favorite. the sanctity of the man's house. That's my favorite thing to do, though. Well, we're going to be going to... into we're, we're going to be going into Chateau Lady in Black. We can do ranging then. I'll, I'll lean over to Zier. Just explore on the first floor. Yeah. I, have... Whenever, whenever you lean over, I think Zero will say, "There's really only one thing I'm interested in exploring," and she'll kind of look back out towards where we walked in, where um, Leandros was. Hmm. Do you I'm have something else? Do you have a forge or something here? I like to work to calm down. Nine. My work is not. I hesitate to say brutish, but it is not so. Uh... My artistry lies elsewhere. I no longer lead the use of a blacksmith or a forge because metal is like clay to me. Tradition versus innovation. Well, well yes, but also metal is literally clay to me. I, I, I think um, it might just be a matter of power. And he like, he takes one of the gears and then like as he's shifting his fingers you can see the gear like shift into different forms and it's just like it looks like malleable liquid in the air and then he just snaps his fingers and it just drops to the ground it's just like a useless pile of metal i have no use for a forge i'm sorry but uh if my leader spies have been telling me honestly you have a forge you carry in your pocket I don't have one in my pocket. No, he does. Clovis does. Hmm. I do. It's Clovis is the one who carries the... Yeah, the... he points to Clovis when he says that. Mm -hmm. I can put it down outside, uh, if you don't mind, Herr Folger. <sighs> Nine. Do what you feel. I want you to be comfortable. Excellent. Then uh, just let me know whenever you want to get working down this and all. Yeah, now's good. All right, let's go. Uh, and I'll walk towards the entryway. 
Okay. So the two of you make your way outside. Um, I will cut to you in a moment. Zir and Bosric. Um, and Quedon, but... He's is in his own head. you guys want to do? Um... What does, um, Folger, is he, is he about to just go about his business? Uh, he's just kind of, like, keeping an eye on you guys, seeing what you want to do. He's trying to play the host. And he's, for someone who doesn't entertain, he's pretty good at it. He's not, like, he doesn't seem awkward, yeah. Um, uh, it's, Boz actually looks at the hammer and is like, you know, I would hate myself if I didn't try. I know I probably can't, but. He takes his hand off. That is a two <laughs> plus uh, nine. So, Buzzer, roll a uh, constitution save for me. Uh, 18. Okay, you do not pull a muscle in your back trying to lift this hammer with your back. <laughs> well, I, I exerted too much strength at once. Oh, oh, mm, mm. Your ass not so easy, is it? Everyone thinks, oh, little honestly, skinny didn't... guy, he can lift the hammer. Everybody lifts the hammer. Oh, I honestly didn't think I would be able to, but, you know, you always and have to I'm also not so skinny. And, like, he is, like, pretty muscled. Hmm. Not as muscled as you or Galnus, but he he's pretty strong. Thank you, Ethel. Clovis, what's your strength score? Oh, uh, not too bad. I got a 14. So probably, he probably looks like he's a little stronger than Clovis, but not by much. Very well, then um, I will leave you to it. I do have some work I need to do, but um, I have to repair my guards after all, but... Thank you're you welcome to uh, you're welcome to explore the first floors. There are plenty of things for you to look at, plenty of things for you to do. Don't go through the basement and don't go towards the upstairs. I'm trying not to. I'm gonna, I've actually put a, a hand on your shoulder. Like, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I be down here, like. So um, and it, we will. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I bet, well, yes, cut to Gals, but I am actually going to have a few words with Zir and Quedon. I know Quedon is kind of in his own head, but... Okay. Um, so yeah, we cut to the outside. Uh, Clovis, you pop down the uh, the folding fortress. It opens up, and we'll go from there. All right. Uh, I think I might set up my sleeping bag in here while, while we're here. You're not going to stay inside? I enjoy our new friend very much, and um, I'm starting to feel the inkling of a plan for um, what exactly we should try to get accomplished during our time here, um, and he is a, a growing part in it, but um, I mean, I think he's probably just as crazy as all the other ones, uh, by his own admission, for the most part, um, so no, I'd prefer not to fall asleep in his residence given that he's known for turning people into dogs and also robots. Um, I'll put down and sometimes the, dog robots. I'll put down the clockwork heart and uh, just uh, start working. Uh, and I, more than anything else, I'm not actually making anything. It looks like I'm refining my processes. Hmm. I think Clovis will kind of... Uh, like, not, like, trying to be in your business about it, but he'll kind of, like, post up nearby uh, and say, uh, have you ever, did you ever try working on uh, your your friend's uh, machinery, clockwork? I'll let go of the metal piece I'm holding, and then I'll just wiggle thick dwarven fingers and be like, yeah, blacksmith's hands are not made for precision like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, just, I don't know what to do about this person. Uh, they seem like they could have been me if I went wrong. Mm. I'm not saying I didn't. I'm just saying that I'm definitely not there. 
But that person could also just kill me in two seconds. They can manipulate metal. I am metal. So staying in that home where someone can destroy me or take me out of the only protections I have, not smart. Yeah. Makes sense. I imagine if, which hopefully we don't, but if we come to blows at some point, this uh, electricity thing that uh, he seems so fond of is going to come into play. I think I may have some workarounds for that, but um, yeah, someone who can uh, manipulate metal is going to be tough for most of us. I mean, Bosric, you know, metal weapons, metal armor. I'm, I'm covered in metal, metal shield. Uh, Guidon as well. I'm starting to learn about my gods. Hmm. They bless me, and I'm... I feel blessed. Without my armor, their blessings don't affect me. Without my armor, I am everyone back in the town. Without your guys' armor, you are powerful manipulators of magic and things of that nature. I am a suit of armor. This is not a fight I can win. Then perhaps it's time to learn some new tricks, old dog. That's an expression. I'm not calling you a dog. That would be rude. No, I'm old. I'm not stupid. I've heard that one before. It's not due. Well, can never be sure. Um, that said, what I'm getting at is, already, I think I've seen you do things that you didn't believe you could before. Uh, the way you knocked that thing out of that uh, automaton, that was a powerful strike. It wasn't just steel, Galnus. It was no, something but more. But that is how my gods channel their power through me, is through my metal. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's all that the Mother Hearth and Adivar are capable of? I don't know. They've never told me. Hmm. Stendar never told me either. But I find that it seems almost every day certainly every battle that we go through, I'm capable of more than I ever thought before. Stendar seems capable of more than I ever thought before. I'm sure we'll find something, some, some way, for you to be more than just a suit of armor. You may already have it, and just not know. That's the worst. When I find out that there's something that I could have been doing the whole time and I just didn't know about it. It's like, come on, Stendhal. Give me a sticky note next time you give me a power-up. Oh. I understand. I think understanding also leads to your discoveries. Hmm. You seem to have a great understanding of uh, whatever's blessed Zir outside of the latest influence. And you seem to have understanding of um, Quedon's, um partner. Um, and you have great understanding of many of the gods. I have spent years with two gods, and I know nothing about them. Hmm. I know what I've been told by three people. And I'll say the metal he's working is starting to take a shape. <laughs> hmm. That's true. Um, Ignorance is bliss, but it is also stunting. The last time I checked with everything that's happened in the last 48 to 72 hours, not a lot of time for learning. Hmm. Might want to talk to Zir about that, then. As far as I know, she's in about the same boat in that regard as you are. 
Oh, I am nothing like her. Aren't we all just like each other? Perhaps a little, but not that one. She's touched darkness. And she showed it fealty. What have you sworn fealty to? I wonder. This. And I just nod towards the forge. And last I heard, ones who I've at this point donated my life to seem to be good. And I do my best to uphold that. I wonder how many people you might have saved if you uh, hadn't been locked away for 200 years and had been out helping people in the Hamlet. Oh, I already know that answer. Zero. I'd be dead. You're outside of the circle now, and you're not dead. No, but I would have been... The only way I would have stayed outside of this circle is if I had stayed with my friends. If I had stayed with my friends, I too would be dead. The last time I checked, a corpse saved no one. Fear, then, was your god for that 200 years. No. Something far, far worse than fear. Rage. No darkness there, surely. Depends where you point it. If you point your rage at those that deserve that rage for the right reasons, it is the right thing. If you point it at people indiscriminately, then it is a bad thing. Just like this hammer, it's about application. If I put the right force in the right place, I can make beautiful things. And when I swing it at people, I put all the force directly to the wrong places, and it causes pain. Well, I won't argue in uh, smithing metaphors, because I'm afraid you'll have me beat there for sure. Um, but one thing I, I have seen quite a bit of in my time is fire. Uh, a lot of fire in the city, more so than I think a, a lot of people would assume. Um, and one thing that I do know is that when a building catches on fire or, you know, a, a temple, someone's home, uh, especially bad if it's a food storage facility, your granaries, those sorts of things, um, the solution usually isn't to throw more fire at it or to just turn away and hope that it'll stop burning at some point. The solution is to go to the nearest well which hopefully is close by, uh, pick up some buckets and do your damnedest to put it out. You want me to quench the Mother Hearth? No, Galnus. If your rage is what has... If that's the form that the darkness has taken, then what you did... For those 200 years, since the rage seems to still be with you, wasn't working. When what you try to do to put the fire out doesn't work, try something new. As I told two people close to me nearby, and quite recently, I'm working on it. I know. We're all working on it. And I understand that, um, well, I won't claim to fully understand. I don't know everything that happened to you and I don't suspect I ever will, not, not truly. But 
I saw the way that you've reacted when we dealt with Seltradot. And I know that what she did hurt you immensely. And so I understand why the way that Zira acted, which I'm still not quite sure about myself, I understand why that raised red flags in your mind. But try to remember that she was hurt as well, and she may be trying to figure out how to deal with that herself. In that respect, you might find that you're more like her than you realize. And you may be able to help her not go down that dark road you're afraid she's going down. You have some valid points. I'll uh, leave you to your smithing. Don't want to sour the process. How are you souring it? Did you do something to the metal? Did you put something in the forge? No, but I wouldn't put it past myself to figure some way to screw it up. It'll just be a test for me to overcome. <laughs> But you should see to the others. I'm mm. quite safe in here. Well, maybe I'll ask you to uh, show me how it all works then sometime. I, I do like do learning. I, I, I think first I'll teach you how to work the bellows and... Mm, sure. Maybe let's... Well, this one won't lead with you swinging a hammer. Mm. Yeah, I probably... Not great with hand-eye coordination, so I think I'll think I'll be a bellows guy for a bit. We'll build up those arms a little. You're not the first person who suggested that. Maybe I should actually listen. Well, you're holding weapons, bigger arms, bigger swings. Mm. Fair enough. All right, goodness. Oh, that could have See been you. rudely uh, stated. I didn't mean it rudely, but it definitely sounded like it. So mm. I, 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 I hope you can accept it for in whatever manner you choose, and then we'll fix it later. Way to uh, hammer that one out. All right, is that I'm supposed to be a joke? That one. It, you know, it seemed. I'm gonna. And Clovis walks out the door. <laughs> As you walk out, he just goes back to working on it, and he's that was a bad joke. And just goes back Clovis to Clovis closes the door and goes, that was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you're aware, um, he, like, he started working with the metal in front of you. By the time you left, it's, uh, it's, it's almost uh, a two-halved uh, axe. He's, that's what he's forming out. So you'd see it starting to take form before you left. Excellent. All right, I'm going to go get water. So someone else. Uh, so first, we'll unmute. And while that was going on, um, Bosric, you said you wanted to have a short scene with Zir. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take her off to, um, Disney World. Are we finally taking that trip to Disney World, Dad? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Never been there, actually, in real life. But, but I'm not a fan of uh, amusement parks. But anyway, okay, so, yeah, I'm going to kind of leave you and, to a lesser extent, Queen, just because just I don't want to, like, lose track of him. Yeah, of course. Um, well, they're actually out on the porch. There's, 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 I'm pr presuming some kind of grand porch, right? Um, sure. We'll go with that. There, there's like a, a back outlook, uh, that, cause the, um, Castle Seltradot was definitely the highest point, but you can oversee the aquifer from here. Ooh. Truly. Yeah, actually, I'm going to take a minute to look there and kind of like, yeah, see if I can see him. You can absolutely see him. He is a massive shape in the aquifer. Does it look anything like the shape that I saw the other day? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Does it see us? <laughs> you don't know. Right. Um, so after a, a bout of shuddering, Boz will uh, turn his ear. All right. Look. I remember that night when we first met the Lady in Black. Uh huh. That apparition she sent after you, the one that almost killed you. Yeah. That means something to you, right? Oh my god. Was it my mom? Yes, no? Uh -huh. Yes. Um, yeah. It's kind of how she seems to operate. Right. That means something to you. I don't know what that is. And if we're going into some place where a lot of it is going to be her using things from in here against us, you managed to get out of pretty handily saying a lot of things during that pass around thing. I'm not saying that accusingly. We were dealing with that thing from down there. But if you go into a battle and the enemy has weapons you don't know about, that's a good way to end up killed. Sure. Is there anything you can think of that you haven't told us that she could use against us or you? Not, not really, to be honest. See her. I mean, what do you want to know? She operates on fear. I told you what I fear. I fear being drowned. Sure. And we know, looking over at Queden. Werewolves, you, you, you can say it. I'm not precious about it. I'm just trying to be sensitive, but all right. <laughs> Sensitivity right, has been lost in this place. I know, but still, <laughs> I was I was employed by elves. Yes, I am aware of who employed you. Uh, yeah, I, they they he they starts to in. say a name. You notice that he starts to say a name and then catches himself. Someone I knew was associated with the we're, elves. We're fucking under attack. Anyway. <laughs> oh, sorry. <but> I... <laughs> anyway. <it's> like, <laughs> there, are so many, there are so many gnats in this fucking room, James and I. Like, every time I'm on mute, I'm just quietly like, gah, gah. I thought you were talking about me attacking you. Because no. I am, but... <laughs> well, yes, yeah, like, but... Yeah, no, yeah, I, just, yeah. I just have so many flies in this house. Okay, sorry, continue. Zia, <laughs> she used that apparition against you. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else she could have that she could use against you? I need to know this because I'm going into a fight, and I don't like going into fights blind. I I'm not. I'm not like trying to trying to be secret or coy about things. I mean, I I've got my siblings, which you know about. We grew up under my mom. Um, Is that who the apparition was? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You might. I guess you might know her. She's um, probably uh, considering which sides of the law we're both on. I don't think I know her. I mean, well, you've at, at least not personally. Her. You've at least heard of her. But uh, maybe. Um, the, oh my gosh, the, the the lady in gray, the matron in gray. I should know my mom's fucking title. I know her as Kellebuck. The oh, gray matron. The gray matron, there it is. What uh, check am I making? The, you don't have to. That is one of the most famous thieves in the world. That a, is like the- That's, that's a the household Mori name, baby. <laughs> that is the Moriarty of Ravanya. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> Like, that's like stealing jewels from a locked room level. Huh. So she could use her against you. Yeah. I mean, I think anyone's family members are a potential... Oh, she's been using mine. Difficult point. Yeah, I know you've got yours. Um, I don't know. I guess for for Galnus and Queden, it's kind of more 
friends and family, it sounds. I don't know what she's going to use against me. Frankly, I'm terrified. No, I mean, I, I, I mean, I had my siblings. They died. That sucks. But I, I'm comforted by the fact they're, you know, still kind of present. You're lucky that way. <laughs> well, I don't know about the one. Well, and I, and I point to like the the strength, she says, she the says strength that of white quietly, hair compared to where they could be. Yeah, she says that quietly, as if she doesn't want them to hear that she said that about them. Um, no, I mean that's pretty much it. I I never knew my my real parents. I mean, the great matron is my real mom, really. Um, what, what, what else is there? I'm a thief. Uh, I miss Mez, but you, you were there for that. Yeah, that was You're also there for the thieving, to be fair. I <laughs> should have got a chuckle. <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> All right. But if she has some bizarre... Uh, Two-headed snake monster thing that comes out and bites me because of you, I reserve the right to say I told you so. I say it's, it's kind of a half joke, but it's like he's worried that might actually happen. Wait, Paul, can you repeat that real quick? He said, if, you, if she has some kind of weird two-headed snake monster that pops out and bites me because of you, I reserve the right to say I told you so. That because I'm afraid of snakes. I don't know. You didn't tell me. <laughs> and he's kind of with a, with a kind of. You have to laugh because if you don't laugh, you're going to cry. He's going to hit and goes back. And... I don't I don't really have a fear of anything. Yeah, we all think that. Oh. Well, I mean, if she works off of what we think, it, maybe it's as easy as just thinking that we're not afraid. Maybe before, but now she has the backing of the god of fear. Mm. And if anyone knows that, it's him. He might know things we're afraid of that we didn't know. No. Nothing we can do to prepare against that. That's true. I, I I wish I had some secret thing I could tell you that would that would help, but I, I, I really don't. I've I've been really lucky to have the family that I had, and I've lost them. And it stinks to relive that, but it's not, I don't know, it's not something that'll paralyze me. I, I've been coming to terms with it, kind of. Like I said, I mean, they're not really fully gone. So I haven't actually really needed to grieve yet. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm pretty good at what I do. I've never really had too many fears about being caught or anything going sideways. I'm, uh, yeah. Then you lead a charmed life. Thanks. I, I wish you did as well. Anyway, we should go see what the, uh... Yes, this conversation has gotten very awkward. I think it's time we move along. And about this time, uh, Clovis, I, I, you walk... I'd like to go see Leandros. I promise I won't mess with him. Not this time. No, yeah, just... just, I, just... I, I just want to look at him again. Hi, Clovis. Hey, yo. What are your fears? 
We're having another share circle since we got interrupted. This is a cool energy that I've just walked in on. Yeah. Um, oh, we know your fears. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I, at that at that uh, chair circle, I was going to say, I'm willing to offer up whatever you may want to know, but I'm pretty sure you guys know most of the pressing information already. I've, I've not been particularly close to my chest. And neither have I. Sure. <laughs> go with that. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't know why you guys think there's some secret to me. I'm awesome. You're a thief. You you live in secret. Sure. You said something about the statue outside. Yeah. The per oh. the person outside. Mm -hmm. The the stat the stats. And... No, I'm going to abandon that idea immediately. It's a person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I, I already promised Boz I'm not going to get into trouble this time. Cool. I'm going to go walk outside and look at it because the energy in this room seems very strange. And I don't like it. It's, it's, you, it's, it's very strange, Clovis. I, and he's my supposed to my like, mom is, together. My mom is the Grey Matron. That's all you missed. Okay. I don't know, uh, Queen Potter. I don't know who that is, but I live in the woods. So. I don't. I don't know who it is either. And you I do know I who it is. Live. Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Like you would have, like even like in your cloister in your city, like Grey Matron strikes again would be like all over like the newsprint stuff like that because again mm. gotcha. she would pull off impossible things like robbing someone in their own locked home. Mm, okay. Oh. I that makes sense as to why you're good at all the stuff you're good at. Yeah. Mm. Sort of like a family business then? Yeah. Hmm. We um I didn't know thieves did that. Well we were kind of a special case. My, um, obviously my siblings aren't satyrs. Mm -hmm. I think, I think we've all kind of put that together. We're not siblings by blood. Um, mm -hmm. we're siblings by circumstance. Um, an unfortunate one. Mm. I, I think, I don't, I don't know the details. She's never really told me. I've never really wanted to, but a, a lot of people died mm. and, uh, we all happen to, you know, be without parents at the same time, and she saw an opportunity to put together a pretty cool team. Hmm. Well, you know what they say, blood of the covenant and all that. Yeah. That's that's all there is to me. Otherwise, I'm pretty pretty solid. All right. Person. And she'll walk out the door. <laughs> so the two of you go outside, um, and you can hear Galnus working. You could probably see him, too, because you didn't set up far from the door. Mm -hmm. um, and Bosric, do you go with them, or are you going to um... bed? I'm actually going to sit, just sit up for a bit and kind of watch Gretos and kind of watch, track his movements and see the way he acts. Okay. Just for future um, reference. I'll say he swims around. Like, the, the aquifer is massive, so sometimes you do lose sight of him, but he always, like, circles back for about an hour, and then you see him approach the shore, and the shape vanishes. And then you don't see it again. Then I'll go back. Then I'll, yeah, I'll go inside. Okay. The queen says, well, that's been a long and frustrating and slightly terrible day, as all of our days have been here. I'm going to bed. And he makes his way off. Oh. Um, so. Queen, ahead. queen, actually, before, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we should do the distribution of 
potions and whatever. Yes. Queen, we need to divvy up the potions just in case. Right. Um, he opens up his bag. Here's what I have. Um, which I believe was one superior and one standard. So he um, he passes this out to the two of you. Or he passes them out to you. Since I don't... I I have my own healing and I, I can take care of myself. I think you and Galnus need them more than me. Yeah. And that way we can f you can uh, have your hands free for uh, for other wizardry. Oh, clerically. I don't know. It's been a long day. So, it, how many was it? One of each. One standard and one greater. He may correct me on that later, but that is all you will need for now. If it turns out there are more, you can get more. I don't have it in my notes, and I would message him to get exact numbers, but he is at work. So. And equipment, of course. <laughs> Alright. Um, so we'll cut outside. Uh, Zir and Clovis, you see this Massive um, sky iron statue. One greater, one superior? Yes. Actually, I just realized something. We are not in the village anymore. Oh. New track. Yeah. It's a big statue. I look over at his ear. I don't, I don't know. I don't really know how to do this. Are you looking for like buttons or some sort of like hidden compartment or something? You guys have no humanity. <laughs> she'll just kind of mutter. Um, and she'll just place a hand at its foot. Okay. And see if she can feel anything, get a sense of anything. Are you trying to steal his toes? Yeah, sure. This little piggy went to my... No, what the fuck? Like... <laughs> I'm confused as to what you're doing. This is a human being! Yes. And he's <laughs> permanently fused to this location. I'm not sure what it is that you're trying so to do. So maybe I can maybe I could talk to him. I don't know. And I like, I like squeeze harder. Um, you, you get a sense, like you feel something, um, like sort of just like a static, but yeah, you, you don't feel anything as it would, like you can, you can see that his feet are not bolted down. Mm -hmm. Um, but you get a sense that there is some kind of energy moving below the armor. But other than that, that's what she sense. I did not listen to this track all the way through. Asterisk eight with this. Oh my god! It's gosh. fucking <laughs> ominous, dude. Yeah. I feel stressed. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. H hello. <laughs> She'll say. <laughs> No response. Like with her eyes closed, I think she's just like <laughs> I'm trying to have a seance. Yeah, unfortunately, no response. Yeah, um, there's gotta be like a heart in here, huh? And I think she'll clamber on it towards. It's tall, right? It was like uh -huh. described seven as seven feet tall. Yeah, so she. I think she'll try to clamber up to where she can put her like ear on. Um, like near its chest to see if there's like a heartbeat that she can hear. Uh, you hear a very faint heartbeat that is occasionally mixed with the clank of a gear. Mm. 
How's it going up there? He's he's still in here. Well, yes, he's a living statue. Well, that's what that's what Herr Folger said. Do do you see any do you see any access points? I think all of those are probably underneath his clothes. Is he wearing clothes? I don't see a dick. What the? I feel like I, if he wasn't wearing clothes, probably I would see a, some sort of. Dreadmaster, is the statue wearing clothes? I hate it. The armor is, it's it's a suit of armor, so. Yes. But tell us about that dick. (laughs) Uh, You don't know, the thumping may have been coming from the dick area, you're not sure. See, ask Uh, and you shall receive. mm -hmm. I can't leave you guys alone for a minute, can I? This is a serious horror campaign. (laughs) What happened to that dick? We don't know. It's under the armor. Fear of the unknown. Classic. Got him. Wow. here has got something for you now. Your wow. entire attack is just going to be dicks on statues. Mm-hmm. When you say access point zero, are you, do you, what is, are you, is that thief lingo? Are you looking for something specific? Or do you just mean there, are well, you like a control scheme? There's a human heart in here. Mm-hmm. I, you can't just. Well, I just you have to think. I mean, this is a heart that's been operating for a long time. You think maybe Folger would need to check on it sometimes, but I guess if he can just kind of. You saw the thing he did with the watch, right? Yeah. I think it probably is sort of that situation. Fuck. Ah. So we'd have to catch him in repairs. Mm -hmm. Or figure out his mechanism and some way for us to replicate it. Hmm. All right, another time. Mm -hmm. And she'll clamber down. Don't worry, we'll, we won't forget you. And she'll, she'll like place her hand on the foot again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Clovis will look up to it and say, I'm not sure if you can he- hear us, but um, if we can do anything to help, we will try. Uh, both of you sense that pulse again, but doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, hmm. I'm actually going to cut back to Galnus for a moment. Um, Galnus, as you're working on this axe, it's coming along really well. Um, And you hear a faint uh, feminine voice say, Do you really think your armor is what we care about, child? Uh, When I take it off, I feel the power go away. You feel the power of the armor go away, but we're still here. I don't know how this works. Galnus, have you learned anything in your life by just denying the things you don't know? Or do you ask questions? Did you learn to blacksmith from a master, or did you just pick up a hammer one day and start beating at a rod of iron? I I picked up a rod and started beating it with a hammer. I don't believe that. You would have had to be taught by someone. But regardless, you learn things by asking questions. If you want to know how this works, ask us. You made an oath to us. That means we owe you something. Uh, all, all right. How does this work? Well, you've made an oath to the forge. You bring the heat of the fire into battle, you create weapons, you protect those around you, and in exchange you're given power. 
That doesn't come through your weapon or your armor. Notice that as soon as you remove your blessing from a weapon, the weapon disintegrates, but you do not. We're being channeled through you almost constantly. I'm just at my strongest in my armor. Well, yes, of course, but I mean, Clovis is at his strongest in a church in a city where the focus of his church is the strongest. Bosric is the strongest with a weapon in his hand, but if Bosric was faced with a foe, he would use whatever weapon he had at hand. Headbutts, fists, tusks, a stick he found on the ground. Zir is strongest when she is unseen, but you've seen her fight perfectly well once her cover has been blown. Sir, you're strongest in your armor, but you're not weak without it. Yeah, that's and that's my concern. That guy is literally just manipulating metal. Yes, he is certainly something. But he's given in to a blessing of fungus and spores. And it seems like he had power before. Can he just crush us within our armor? If he has the desire to, I suppose he could, but... Don't you think if that's what he wanted to do, he would have done so already? He just hasn't been given a reason to do it yet. Well, sure, but do you fight without reason? I, I don't. I don't know that he doesn't. We're just interesting right now. We're a toy. I don't think you're a toy. I think you're an asset. You're a hammer to be wielded against his foes. As he said, he he cannot act directly against any of those that he considers rivals. He didn't say anything about using others to act for him. Well, I'm fairly certain he's going to try to kill us. Well, certainly. I think everything here is going to try to kill you, but he's not trying to kill you right now. Take that for the blessings it is. Yeah, we're definitely going with the yet. But soon. I don't trust him. Well, I don't think he trusts you either. It was nice to see Clovis out here. I'm glad you're taking an interest in him. He's nice enough. God guy, as he likes to say. Yeah, I don't quite understand that. No. To be fair, you're a god guy, too. We are gods, as we've told you. No, no, I, I get that, but I mean, he's like a god guy. Like, he'll hear, like, all the gods. Like, he seems to love them all. Well, he studied it. If you had devoted your life to study of books instead of the study of metal, you might be a god guy, too. Yeah, I don't need that. No? Nah. Everyone's different. People need different things. Right, well... Just need to clear my head, that's all. Very well. Just... It's a lot. It's a, a lot has happened in a very short period of time, and I am a very slow-moving creature. I'm not a blade that was meant to be quenched. I'm just differentially, you know, cooled. Use whatever logic you'd like, and then you feel the presence fade. And I will say, Adivar, I feel this one's more you. And then uh, just uh, with the axe as I'm working it. Yeah, this one's not bad. Proper workmanship there. So, and then just thinking about him, I'm going to make the, um, the bottom. So it's still going to come up like uh, this. But the bottom, because uh, you said he's a uh, ram, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to bring it down and at the bottom, it's going to kind of just go into a small wave where it looks kind of like horns before it comes back up uh, to where the, uh, the, the head's going to meet the uh, shaft. All right. Does anyone else have anything they want to do before they bed down for the evening? I'm ready to bed down. All right. Um, Clovis, you have uh, the sand or the the dust, um, and you are the only one other than Galnus. Galnus, are you sleeping in the uh, the tower? Or are you going to sleep in um, Folger's house? Can't hear you. Is anybody else coming out to the uh, the, the structure? Just Clovis. Clovis is sleeping in the tower, yeah. Um, upon finishing um, my work, uh, if I see Clovis coming out, I'll just point towards the door and go, no, we don't leave anyone behind. I'm not being left behind. No, but they are in there unfamiliar territory with someone that we don't 100% trust. If I get turned into a robot, I'm kicking your ass. <laughs> um, no, go inside. And as you're walking away, I'll say loud enough, you get turned into a robot, I promise to use the metal to make something interesting. I'm gonna kick your ass! <laughs> And I'll head back inside with, uh, as I'll say, do you want to turn this into like a, a, a coin or whatever it is in your pocket before we leave? Yeah, he, he would have, if he knew that you weren't going, I, I just assumed and, and like skipped over it, but yeah, he would, he would pop it up, then say his joke about, uh, kicking your ass. Okay. And then I'll just, uh, follow you in. I'll say before we go in the door, I'll say it was your idea to come back and watch over them. You don't. And if you don't respond to that, then we'll just walk in. Oh, you said it to Clovis. I, I said it to Clovis. It to the gods. I said it to Clovis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he just goes, fine. All right. Um... Then Folger was being honest with you about one thing. Inside the house, you are immune to the effects of Nelisir's magic. You sleep through the night. Yippee! Um, the next morning, uh, you do not see Folger. He seems to be up to whatever business he's up to. But uh, each of you is brought to your room, because you each have private rooms, uh, food by one of the little automaton servants. Nice. What kind of grub do we get? Um, like, nothing fancy, just, like, toast and eggs. Hey, I'll take it. Nice and robot toast meal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, uh, so yeah, I'll, yeah. What I'll, do you... I'll link up with everyone. Okay. Uh, you guys meet up sort of in the the foyer area outside of the rooms, so you can have whatever morning ritual or conversations you'd like to have. How'd the smithing go? It's a work in progress. Well, the question is, how far along did I get in an axe head? Um, I mean, just an axe head, you... Depends on how long, how late into the night you worked on it. I would have gotten my eight hours of rest, but I would have worked up till the last minute. That's when I would have... We would have went inside. Um, you, you're trying to do a, a double bearded? Double bearded. Uh... What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's a two-headed two axe that, cur oh, that curves down. Cool. Yeah. Uh, bearded axe being an axe that comes down and curls so that it can catch the heads of shields and move them out of the way. Oh. Um, 
the more you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, so yeah, you're most of the way done. There's a little bit of detail work you need to do, and you still need to sharpen it. Yep. I may not be a blacksmith, but I know weapons. <laughs> yeah, I forget that sometimes. That's why I'm like, it's axe. Because <laughs> yeah. With you, I could be like, here's exactly what it is. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, it's mostly done. Like I said, detail work. Oh, that's right. Um, then I would relay that just uh, some detail work um, and then uh, attach it to uh, an adequate handle. Do, do you need this one back? I, I love it. I, I'm making good use of it, but I, I don't want to keep a handle if you need it. No. All right. That's in the past. I need something, um, something new. Cool. Suit. Is this one adamantine or whatever, too? No, no, not, none of them are adamantine yet. Mm. I, I need time for those. I need time where I can dedicate a day, two days, three days to really making the things I need made. Wow. Cool. Why the interest? That's something you care about. Okay. I just didn't think you had any interest in, uh, my working on uh, wares. I don't care about the wares, but I care about you working. Does that make sense? I have a couple thoughts on it, but um, so you're interested in when I'm doing other things? Do you know what friends are? <laughs> yes. Explicitly. Off to one side, Bosby is like, this is... <clears throat> that, generally, that's how friends work. Yes, but you... Clovis likes, like, book stuff. I and I've, I've read maybe three books in my life. But he was writing a book the other day, so I watched him do it. Seems like the friendly thing to do. I'm still working out some things. I'm trying to understand your uh, your angle. Angle? Galnis, when you were traveling with your uh, previous friends, uh, one of them was a, a machine worker, worked on, on clockwork and stuff. Yes, an artificer. Mm -hmm. You may not have necessarily understood everything that he was doing, but I no, imagine no, no, no. you still took some interest in his work. I, I took interest. Mm -hmm. In my friend's... That's what Zia's trying to do. I don't know that she's necessarily doing it well, but... No, I'm... I'm confused because... I'm confused by some of her actions. Um, She's already told me that I can't trust her. And now she's asking about things that I do. So I don't know what the angle is. I don't think you can trust anybody. That's just textbook. That's how I was raised. That's the circle that I run in. I, I feel like I have a general concept of trust with these guys, but even that's light. That's just, that's just the world. I don't expect you to trust me. I, I don't, I don't expect anyone to trust anyone. That, that has nothing to do with you. How sad and for in you. Terms of, and in terms of my actions, I, I'm sorry I got kidnapped. I'm impulsive and young. I, I don't, I question why you went outside. I don't understand why you showed fealty to your kidnapper. Other than you are one of hers. I was poisoned. I went outside because I was trying to get a better shot. Uh, no. I'm trying to think of how to put this. You were poisoned. I understand that. 
uh, when you regain your senses, you burn something in effigy to her. That's yeah. showing fealty to her. She was a person before she was a monster. I'm thinking maybe this is less fealty and more empathy. And something that perhaps you and I, who had a very different view of Seltradot, can't understand. But... But what... Why would you feel empathy towards someone who kidnapped you, made you, poisoned you, made you attack your friends? It doesn't make sense. Do you all know these, something we didn't? All of these people... All of these people who have tried to kill us or mess with us or that we're trying to kill showed up the same way we did. And Any, chose darkness who's to say any of us might not do that in 50 years do you feel that's in your future i think it's possible for any of us i mean we don't know what the fuck this is if she holds up her wrist where the corruption is well that's just gonna kill us how do you know that it told us do we trust it And also what Kismet said. Don't let it get to your heart. Yeah, and what happens then? Then we're probably done. Their fate's worse than that. Could be a... And she once again looks out at where like in. Like where um, Lyandris is. There are. Could, could be it's a true. metaphorical heart as well, Baldrick. Okay. Is, here, is there? I on I personally, at least, understand your drive towards showing empathy to everything that you can. I think it's particularly noble, which is why I've never taken any issue with the fact that you do it, even though sometimes it it can be detrimental. Um, <clears throat> this particular case does feel a, a little bit more difficult to manage. Um. So I, I also can't help but wonder if um, perhaps you uncovered some information while you were under her thrall or, or saw more about uh, Lady Seltradot than, than we did. I've seen people be empathetic to their captors, but once they accept those captors then they are no better than their captors um and that's what i'm trying to work out is what you are are you a seltra dot that will eventually stab us in the heart the back and the head um <clears throat> there's this empathy thing that i'm hearing a lot about although I, I don't know you well so i don't know of your proclivity to be empathetic to all the uh, individuals that you meet why are you traveling with us? If you think I'm just some some future monster that's going to hurt you or hurt anyone else. Well, in my f in fairness, I chose to join you before I thought you were a monster. It's true. Okay. And I just And then trying... why didn't you why haven't you left yet? Be I just don't understand. I mean, I Because I I want to finish the job I was sent here to do. I want to go home. And if my suspicions ended up being correct, I wanted to also make sure that the others here had a bulwark against it, as people that are close with others tend to give an overabundance of chances and forgiveness. I am not burdened by that because I don't know you. So whereas if you do something that was more malicious or sinister in nature, they may be willing to explain it away, and I would not. <clears throat> now, I hope I'm wrong, and I'm doing my best to work through what I've been told I'm doing. I'm trying to not... Well, I can't say not. I've already 
pushed the frustration and anger that I have with Seltradot well onto your head and shoulders. I am trying to relinquish that, but I am looking for reasons to do so. And that is what I am trying to do. It's called growth, I've been told. But it's hard when I've been in a group where I was taught trust is the foundation. And I'm now dealing with someone that says trust is something that cannot be had. So you are remarkably different from everything that I know. And I'm putting my life in your hands by being here. It is a very confusing situation. And I feel terribly about it because one, you are young, and two, I hit you in the face with a hammer. And I'm like, she had a diary. I saw you burn the book. Yes. There were, there were things in the diary that I read. I know more about her. I know why she came here. I know what her motivations are. And she didn't share that with the world. I didn't think it was appropriate to share with the group. I didn't want anyone else to come behind and read it. It's not for anyone to know. I shouldn't have read it myself. But it allowed me to... I, I saw who she was before she became what she was in that diary. And it made me feel bad for her. So I burned the book so no one else would read it and learn things about her that she wasn't willing to divulge. And it sucks that she became what she did and now we had to kill her. I've never killed anyone before and I would like to try not to kill anyone again. And like Clovis said, I guess that's a detriment, but. No, 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 I I'm don't. I'm not going to let this land compromise who I am. I, no, that's fine. I, do you think I like taking lives? No, I don't think anyone does. I, I hate having to kill. I don't want to have to, but I will. I don't, I want to give everyone a chance. <laughs> that chance is what stayed my hand from doing anything when I thought ill of you. Despite everything, still a chance. But sometimes uh, you have to do... That's what I gave Seltra to. I guess you can think of it that way. Notably, she did this after Seltra was already dead, so with no chance of hurting anyone. So it was less empathy and more secrecy. If you want to view it that way, I don't want to mince words with you. If you trust me, you can trust me. If you don't, then you don't. You chose to stick with us. You're going to have to put up with who I am, just like I put up with who everyone else is. I'm sorry we're different. We're a motley crew. I grew up among thieves. That's my whole thing. Oh, you're a thief. Yeah. It's not really something you tell someone who already doesn't like you, so I haven't told you. But if it helps you know me better, yes, I'm a thief. That's what I've done my whole life. All the secrets. I run with a group of criminals. Secrecy makes more sense now. I I haven't been holding a ton of secrets from you guys. <laughs> the oh, only I, thing that I don't, I'm, I've held is the diary. And I do scratch. I think should be a secret from anybody. And I do scratch my head and be like, I don't know your secrets. I'm talking about the secrecy of her, the protection of her secrets so that others wouldn't dis uh, discover them. You being a thief and having that secrecy of things, getting rid of the book for that reason, makes sense to me. Just feels human. I wouldn't want to read your diary. I wouldn't want you to read mine. How diaries work. 
But if yeah. you want to attribute it to my thievery ways, then if that helps no. you conceptualize me better, then fine. If this sounds cold, it is because I'm trying to find a way to look at you right now other than something that she possessed. I have a lot of anger and I have a lot of frustrations around that subject. I don't know why you're hurting a victim because you're a victim. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And emotions don't always make sense. I'm working on it. Queen and Pisces, Galvis, why, why did you hate her so much? Seltradot, I, I mean. That's who killed my party. That's who killed my friends. Do you ever think about the people you've killed? Yes. Do you ever think about the friends that they have? The people you've made them abandon? All the time. He just sort of nods. Even when I kill out of necessity, I regret it. I see the face of every person I've ever killed every night. And the day I don't is the day that I know I'm lost. And I think about their friends because I know how I felt. And I know that I did to those people what I myself am dealing with. I torture myself every evening. Not healthy. Probably not. Well, I for one don't want to uh, overstate my welcome in Fulcher's house. I think he's been very kind to us, and I don't want that kindness to run out. He frightens me a great deal. I am great. still distinctly worried about being turned into robots. So then, let's, then let's walk and talk. Um, have, I'm we, gonna... have we got what we needed from here? We got as much as we can get. Did you guys we... search the home? Yeah. Mm. We came for information. We didn't get what we wanted, but we got other information instead. We got perspective. I think that's about as good as we're going to get. Is there something still that, that you want to know, Zia? He seems pretty amiable. I, we probably could just ask him. I just, I just want to make sure we're ready. I think we're as ready as we're going to be. That was way better than what I was going to say. So, uh, do you guys head out? Yeah. I'll find the nearest automaton. Uh, please give our regards to uh, her Fulcher and our thanks for the allowing us to stay. The automaton just sort of inclines its head at you and then whizzes off. Um, so you guys exit uh, Folger's house and you make your way um, probably walking for about an hour and then Quedon stops and he kind of holds his chest. Something feels... Something feels strange. I... Oh dear. And then mm -hmm. the sound in the forest stops yeah okay and um you see very slowly one finger at a time a hand appear on Quedon's shoulder and um you hear a <laughs> and you see um that the hand is not human it is wooden and <laughs> a puppet made of wood creeps out behind uh Quedon. And it has a nasty rictus smile. And you all hear a voice say, Am I going to someone else for information? Or oh, that is cheating, my, my dear? I'm afraid I'm going to have to borrow one of you. And then the puppet 
limbs from everywhere sprout out of this puppet's body, wrap around Queedon, and he is yanked backwards into a portal and disappears. And that's where we're going to take our break. <laughs> to put it bluntly, shit just went down. Uh, Queedon got abducted by a puppet. And you have a pretty good idea about where he might have gone from the French voice ringing through the trees. Mm -hmm. The damn French strike again. The fucking French! I've never met a Frenchman I could trust. And that says a lot, because I'm French. <laughs> okay, um, I think uh, Clovis just, just screams. Um, cause he does, <laughs> it, we're in the forest. He does not like that. That puppet, it's a puppet. Doesn't like that. Made of wood. Didn't like that either. Portal, generally not great. The puppet was horrifying. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the, dubs. a question about the puppet. Did it just appear out of nowhere? Because wouldn't I have sensed it if it was waiting and laying in wait? You would have sensed it if it was there. Mm -hmm. Oh, so no, just... that's what I'm saying is, was it there in some capacity? Um, you, you wouldn't have sensed it because it um, came out of the portal and latched on him. Like, as soon as it the, the hand was there, that's when you sensed it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So it was magically moved onto his body. Thank you. That's I was wondering because mm -hmm. I was like, wait, yeah. I have literally my entire power is countering this. Like... <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, it's almost like it was designed to specifically <laughs> remove certain assets. <laughs> the portal no, there, there, there is a thing. There is actually a thing in the next fight that Dallas is go is like specifically a thorn in my side for. Right. And I I knew that going into it. I designed this boss fight and then gave Dallas this power, knowing that this boss fight is going to suck for me, and that's okay. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Boss is actually going to look at both uh, Dallas and Zier. I know you two are. All are on an edge right now but it's not just about the youtube anymore now we've got to worry about getting queen back so well no now galness has to victim blame queen i'm gonna yeah. <laughs> she, she she, she, he will actually yell Zip! and not yes. we are going into serious hell we do not know what that woman is capable of. We have only the barest glimpse. This is not a time for levity. This is a time to focus. Now. I don't think she was kidding. Plan time. Bosric, what do you have? That's the thing. I don't know. I don't know what we're up against. All I know is she can use our fears against us. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I've got some magic that may be able to counter some of her effects. Um, I'm going to be the best at protecting myself, just because of the way that the spells work. But I can provide some uh, additional protection to you all as well. What's happening? We need to go to Elizabeth's mansion and get Queden back. What did she do? She took Queden. No, no, I, I was fear. here for that. Fear is her power. Uh, she warps your mind. We were talking about her uh, with the matron. Okay. She hurts you. She hurts you psychically. Mm -hmm. No problem. It seems like we're all pretty fucked already. Yeah, we've been not thrilled about this encounter for a while now. Mm -hmm. Do we know that's where he was taken? No. That was her voice. What's her, her voice? I guess perhaps he should have taken power. him somewhere else, but if she wanted to keep him from us, I suspect she would put him in her most protected place. She's all about games. Yeah, but if we go to her... What does she live in? A castle, a shack? What do we got this time? Like a big house on a hill. Uh, yeah, if we go there, the game... Mansion, it, correct, Redmaster? It's a mansion, yeah. 
if she likes games, then us going directly to her right now ends the game. And if people oh. like games, they don't want uh, it to end. No, I think that it, stops I think the it game. starts the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, she like nods and paws. <laughs> Do you have any ideas, Galmus, for preparations that we should make? If she's concerned with fear, I would just say divide and conquer. If you're looking at something that scares the shit out of you, switch. Other than that, I mean, do, how does she affect your mind? She just makes you see things? Not sh we're not sure. We only know that she's been able to get at us in our dreams, and she was able to conjure an apparition that was able to hurt Zia using some form of psychic power. We know I... that... We were we were outside when here, I'm gonna share something with you, Galnus. <laughs> it's, it's yours kind of being snide. <laughs> I, I'm going to reply. Okay, but don't hurt yourself. <laughs> um we we were outside um one night and she approached us and uh well this won't surprise you. I, I said something that pissed her off. Um and Last uh one. she reacted in kind. And, uh, well, I, I was just standing there and then I saw my mother, obviously not actually, but, but some kind of apparition, uh, come, come forward to me and, and, and stab me. And it, it hurt like hell and almost brought me fully down. In fact, I, I, I did go down. I, I fell unconscious, um, and, and Boz, I think, carried me inside and, when I finally came to, I, I woke up in pain and, and in a panic, but there was no, there was no wound. I, can, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that I was stabbed and there was no remnant of the fact that that happened to me. Was what you were attacked with, was it real? Was it, was it corporeal? I don't know. I don't think so. I think- Osric didn't seem to see it. But Queden looked oh, after her and, and healed her and confirmed that she was her 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 body suffered some sort of physical damage. Uh, you check with the dreadmaster. I saw the apparition, right? Uh -huh. yeah. oh, okay. I saw the thing. I still don't know what it was. Did you swing at the thing? It moved too fast. I didn't know what it was. I just knew it was something. Well, the problem, and then, the and then it did it. Its damage and was gone. It was like that. Channeling an old friend, we have no information on what she can do other than be scary. But in all fairness, Air Folger, the doctor back there, scares the shit out of me. So all we know is she's scary. Do you know anything more than she's scary? She has some ability to manipulate the woods. She did that while we were traveling to Lady Seltradot's home. Um, she moved the path around us. So an illusion? Quite possibly, but it, it, it was real. Well, I have a way around that. Okay. Um, the other thing that we have confirmed that she did was she ripped a piece of the dead, uh, well... Not necessarily dead. She ripped a, an effigy of the deity of fear out of our previous traveling companion. And that may have made him more powerful. pulled his source of strength directly out of his body. I move my hand down and cover, like, the lantern a bit. Um, okay. In Zero, fairness, she, she I was will, to that. I will share now. Yay. Breath. Uh, um... We don't have to worry as much about illusions. Um, I don't think it's uncommon knowledge that I can't see. Um, but after I got here, when I lost my sight, I gained the ability to not see, but um, identify, sense, be aware of. Um, out to a, you know, a certain distance. I mean, I'm not 
I can't see forever, but it doesn't matter what you are. If you're there, I know you're there. If you're not real, you're not there. So if it's a spooky nightmare that she's making, I'm going to know it's a spooky nightmare. Or if it's something we can actually do something with. Meaning, we could beat the piss out of it. So that can you, take... What? Can you hold your hand out? I hold my hand out. Everybody touch his hand. Why are you, why, why is everybody touching me? One at a time. What is happening? Clovis will reach first. Okay, th- 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 thank you, Clovis. Um... Yeah, memorize these. Your hands? Yeah. Oh, I think she wants us to... The feeling. I think she wants us to memorize how we feel so you know it's us. But you already know that, right? We're not... not, We're not really going to know who's who very well, I think. Well, I can see your outline. I can see... I can't see your faces, like your facial features... But I can see your bodies for what they are. Sure, but she might make a copy of us. That's true. So to try to remember the specifics. I do. She'll place her hand on yours. Okay. Um, I do my best. Uh, um, A friend taught me to read read mannerisms and read movements. It's how I'm able to fight. So I know exactly how you move. Well... She's puppeted one of us before. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, should I was her or the thing underneath? We don't have full confirmation, but uh, it seems but, to fall in line with the other kinds of if, things that she does. It might have been her, I don't know. If it's not fully confirmed, then put it out of your mind, because we can only work with absolutes. If she works on fear, spinning around and saying this could have been or that could have been is only going to make more opportunities for us to be fearful of what could be done. Does that make sense to anyone? Yeah. Yes. Well, I mentioned to... Not really. I mentioned to Boz, I don't know if this makes any sense, but I mean, let's just not be afraid. No, only a foolish person knows no fear. Oh, okay. Oops. Besides, there's other ways you can feel negatively. You said that she's an she or somebody around her is an aspect of fear. She's somehow linked to Shoatan, the the tyrant of fear. Okay, um, then they're gonna know it. It, it. You can't pretend to not be afraid. Nobody's that I, powerful. I can certainly try. No, try, try, try uh, your, your your little heart out to whatever ends you feel are best. But if you succeed, I will applaud your success. And if you fail, I will know, nod my head knowingly. This is a big improvement, I think. If you feel so. Ah. Uh, but we need an idea of where to go to get Queden because... It'll be at her. It'll be at her seat of power, and that's her home. Well, do we do we play the waiting game? No. I say we go knock on the door. If the only way forward is through. I'm not entirely sure that's where he is, though. It's our best guess. Even if he isn't, she'll be there. And are you prepared to face her? I'll give it the old... uh, Give it the old try. Yeah, we've done what we can. (sighs) All right. Every foe is going to be worse than the last. It's the nature of how it works here. Well, uh, you're going to have to give me a bearing. Like a ball? 
Barry? A direction. No. So I, a direction. Uh, no, but those are very good in your trade. I, Yeah, I love them. <laughs> but we, we as, like, we have a general idea of where her, her lair is, right? It's on a hill. You can see it. It's Yeah, you can see it. You can kind of make your way there. And so far, I think one of the reasons you haven't gone is because you knew she could just change the path if she didn't want you there. Seems like she wants you there now. Osric, I'm physically incapable of taking the lead here. Um, so oh, well, I'll take the lead. <laughs> if, if you're worried about the path changing or the forest manipulating, I'll take the lead. Because I Bob's can't... Bob's already started. Oh, well, no. bye. Galnus, respectfully, you can't see where we're going. So I, I think I think uh, Bosric should... He can, he can see the, the manner that we're going to. Right. I think you're an excellent candidate for uh, shoring up the rear, though. The rear, yeah. All right. All right, then. <clears throat> Watch out for puppets, I guess. So what's the marching order? Uh, I think I'd be behind Boz with a Clovis buffer <laughs> because <laughs> I've, I've tested Galanus' patience too much today. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I firmly think she should stand in front of me. In no way is this a problem or a danger. She should keep her back turned to me and remain in a straightforward line. Take off paint, all of her armor. Paint a target on her back. Yeah. No, I don't need one. It's fine. I'm good. <laughs> it turns out right. I wouldn't be able to see it. So, so you guys um, are walking it's through the wood. On the way, and it looks like you are going to reach her house. Um, no, I'll, I'll let that land. It's fine. I'm so sorry. Just give us <laughs> this moment. It's it was so funny. Like I heard it while I was giving this like great speech, and I'm like, I can't, I can't, I gotta, I gotta let that one sit for a minute. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. It wouldn't even I work. Will make you pay they'd have to later. touch you to read it. It'd be like, well, yeah, and then dwarf enacted that out, and went. I went like this. I was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let it let it be known, chat. I love all of these people so much. This is a horror with campaign. my whole heart. <laughs> Less now, admittedly. Okay. I'm just kidding. Oh my god. Um, I'll accept it. Anyway, so you're making your way through the woods. It looks like you're gonna get there right at like when the sun dips fully behind the water. Uh, so what light there is here will be gone when you arrive. Mm -hmm. um, and as you're walking, the trees seem to be sort of in the way their branches are blowing. It almost looks like they are indicating a direction and bowing to you, as if they were servants leading you to something. The path is clear. Okay. And you arrive... In charge of the trees. You arrive at a lovely not very large manor, much smaller than you expected it to be. It looks to be only maybe a story tall. Can I catch Zir on the road before we get there? You may. Okay. Um, <clears throat> during the, the journey there, uh, Zir, you would you would see Clovis uh, sort of like pick up pace to catch up to you, uh, walk beside you in silence for a second um, and say, hey, I respect your choices, and I'm, as a friend, proud of, of what you've done. And I'm hurt that you kept the diary from us. I understand why you did it, and I don't disagree with your reasoning behind it. But I just want to make sure that you realize given what you said to Galnus about empathy and trying to have it for the people that we can, that in burning that diary and, and choosing not to tell us about it, you didn't give me the opportunity to have that empathy. You took it away from me. And I, I don't expect you to tell me what it said, and I respect your choice not to, but it does hurt a little bit 
that I don't have the opportunity to feel that way. I didn't think about it like that. I know. But we can't we can't all think about everything. I make mistakes like that all the time. But I, I you're my friend and I know that that distinction would be important to you, so I wanted to make sure that I told you. That's yeah. how I feel. Well. I don't know, I guess... I guess there was something in me that felt like... It, you know, it was the side of her that maybe she was... that she, she felt bad about or didn't want, didn't want people to see, was trying to make up for it. I think maybe that's a common theme with all of the Dukes. Um, and so it, it just didn't feel appropriate to, to share that, but I don't know, I guess. I guess maybe it is better for people to know that, you know, she was human first. I, I think, I hate to say Galmus was right, but <laughs> I think, um, I, you know, he wasn't wrong in saying that I think, you know, people who grew up like me value secrecy, value privacy. And so that was my instinct, but you know, I didn't I didn't want to break this person's privacy that I had already broken myself to other people, but um well she I mean she wanted kids. And we all saw that in a really twisted and warped way, but came from a place of pain, from infertility, for not feeling enough. And that, that sucks. Yeah, it does. And I mean, what I said to Galness, I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't like to think about y'all that way, but there's some reality to the situation in that we all have some sort of shortcoming that might become our... Not, not to say that that was a shortcoming of hers, but, but this thing that you... I think all of us have been really honest with the fact that there are parts about ourselves that we feel guilty about. So, I don't know. It's scary to think about what Clovis might turn into. There's an idea I've been wrestling with recently. What do you think makes a city? The people. That's the conclusion that I've been coming to, but so many aspects of, of what we see and what we do here make it more difficult to come to a distinct answer. A people, yes. That, that's the, the generally understood concept. A city is comprised of a group of people who join themselves together in community and, and, and fellowship. They look out for one another. They, they produce and provide with each other. But is there not still so much violence and betrayal and selfishness that occurs in the city? I suppose what I'm getting at is uh, a little convoluted, but I, 
don't know if this metaphor has any legs. We... There are a lot of very bad things in the world. There are a lot of confusing and difficult things. And ever since we've gotten here, it seems like we've been swarmed by them. A lot more of them than I at least ever encountered in the world outside of the hamlet. Mm -hmm. But if I am to continue to follow my god here, then I need a city to belong to. And I think, as best as can be managed here, all of you are my city. And I think yeah. I'm part of all of yours. I understand why you chose to do what you did, like I said. And I don't hold it against you that you made that decision. But remember, in the future, when it comes down to it, look out for everyone that you can. But don't forget about your city. I... I would have told you guys eventually. It just... I don't know. I didn't want to tell you right away because... That didn't feel right. We were all happy about her being dead and... Be kind of a, a weird... Dampen her the mood, I guess. And then things just... I kind of continue to snowball. It it wasn't going to be a secret forever, but it was a secret I kept longer than I should have. If I find Elizabeth's diary, I'll let you know. I mean, maybe that's... That was still in her. You know, in Sultradoc, Arania. It may have been. And so, and... Elizabeth, the Elizabeth that walked in day one, is probably still an Elizabeth we're facing now too. I don't know if there's anything we can do about that, but. What I'm getting at here is if you find something like that in the future, give us the chance to make our own decisions. We might surprise you. Okay. All of us might surprise you. You're, you're doing really well. Thanks. In the woods. Did you I've talk to city. um? Did you talk to? Oh God. The God, the God that you were supposed to talk to, Cyrus. Cyrus. <laughs> Hasn't been an appropriate moment yet. Hmm. But I will. It remains in my mind. I, th I think it'd be worth doing before we step into step into Fear City. Not the kind of city you want to be in. Based on what I know about, is that is that how I should be? Did that connect with you at all? Me using city? That probably wasn't right. <laughs> I appreciate the attempt. Thanks. Unfortunately, you're correct, and I should probably try and do that now. I, I don't like praying to anything other than Stendhal while I'm out here, just because that gives me the most. But it's the better choice. This is where you're going to be most connected to her. I know. I wish you weren't right. Well... Me and Harigoki are right here. I'll keep that in mind. Motley Crew. Garashi, Stendar, Harigoki. 
and Adivar and the mother. They probably think that of themselves too. Probably. Well, I suppose we should get Cyrus up in the mix. I'm going to do that back there though, kind of a private thing. No. Godspeed. Did that, that land better? Appro- that feels okay. appropriate. Yeah. Awesome. Heck yeah. <laughs> it just feels like a little fist bump. <laughs> uh, and Clovis will sort of slow his pace to get distance from her. Cool. Um, and I think I think he'll uh, he'll pray to Cyrus. I I think I would pray to Harakuki while he does that. Okay. Um. I don't think Cyrus says anything to you just yet. You get a sense that you are being watched, Clovis. Mm-hmm. In that very way of like something is hunting you, but it's weirdly comforting. Okay. Like I'm watching you and nothing else will. Um, but that's the only connection you get. Mm-hmm. Um Zir, uh, you get a little soft voice. You all right, Papa? Yeah. I just, uh... Well, that was... That was, um... Your follower. That I just kind of shared the secrets of. Um, do you think... I mean, you knew her. Do you think... That was okay. I guess you can't be my moral compass and I don't know. I haven't known Irania for a long time, Zir. But the woman I knew before she turned her back on me would have would have wanted you to keep those close to you close. She lost so much. That's a good point. Your empathy is well placed. But remember this there are plenty of predators that use tricks or transfixing eyes to draw the prey closer. Where yeah. you're going is somewhere even the gods fear to tread. Showatan was a foe unlike anything you've seen before, and if this creature, this Lisabet, can wield his power. You need to be prepared for more than empathy. I trust your blade. I know you don't know the gods, but... Well, just be careful. And then you feel the... the impulse fade. Thanks. Um, alright, so now... You, Wait, um, did you have anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> it, Quita just clicks. Um, Bosrek's been quiet for a while. Is it a Bosrek? Yeah. Throw in there? Yeah, Bosrek, did you have anything you wanted to <clears throat> do on the walk? No, he's driven at this point. He's just... Okay. Don't want to hit a quick knee for Garashi? <laughs> we don't have that kind of relationship. He <laughs> just pops the knee. <laughs> Pops uh-huh. knees, Garashi, like... Garashi will be, Garashi will, will take notice when he sees what I do to this woman. Mm-hmm. All right, so you all arrive again at. Um, I mean, if I get to, <laughs> it's fairly open. Um, and again, it's not as big as you like. You could see it from far away, but it's not what you expected. It's it's a modest one story. I mean, it's big, but it's a modest one story house. Can everyone make a wisdom save for me, please? How close is everyone to me? Um, I think Bosrick might be the only one out of range. Um, I want to give the middle finger to Zir and remove... No, I'm kidding. No. Um, well, does a 21 make it? I'm not going to tell you. Just tell me what you rolled. I'm not going to tell you what's a success and what's a failure. Uh, 29. Uh, is Am I being charmed? <laughs> Um, you are not being charmed, but it is a spell or magical effect. 
Okay. <laughs> which which one was it again? You said con. Yes. No. Oh, con. Okay. Wait, did you say con or wisdom? You said wisdom. Wisdom. I'm sorry. Oh, it's I'm sorry. I. And Clovis and Zero, remember to add plus five to your total. Oh shit! You right. Um. Uh, in that case, that's a twenty-nine. Okay. Sixteen. I'm gonna. Uh, mm, Is the sixteen mm, with the plus five? Mm, yeah. Mm, where are we? You're outside. We're right yeah. outside. You do have uh, advantage with the spell or other magical effect. I that was the sixteen was with advantage. Oh my god! Um, do you have do you have a uh, inspiration? So I do, and I'm trying to decide if I want to use it now or save. Can I gift her my inspiration to use so she can retain hers? I only say that because I actually remembered for the first time I have inspiration and I know this ain't going to happen again. Yeah, I'll let that happen. Ooh, thank you. Hell yeah. Another whiz save. Yeah. That's a 27. Or 26. I was so worried it was going to roll lower. No, it rolled so much better. If Thank she had so rolled much. lower, I would have been like, that's what you get! <laughs> okay. Right. Um, Yay. Thank you. You, uh... <laughs> Zero feels, feels a weird debt to Galvis. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. She would, wait a minute, I have to spike this man. I can't be shaken. Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> So you guys, uh, do you enter the house? The door kind of just creaks open. Do I sense anything inside? No, not in the sixty feet that you can sense things. Um, that I will, I will let you guys know. I don't feel anything or any presences nearby. Um, you guys are gonna hear Clovis mutter something under his breath. Uh, and I'm going to cast a spell. Okay. Uh, and then if, if no one else is moving forward, uh, Clovis will walk in. What spell are you casting? Oh, uh, Intellect Fortress. On myself. Okay. Um... Uh, it uh, gives me resistance to psychic damage, as well as advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. What level spell is that? Third. Okay, you go to cast it, and you feel the magical energy sucked out of your hand. Hmm. You have felt the effects of a counter spell before. Mm -hmm. Just tried to cast a spell and got countered. Uh, it's like we said, games begin. I'm going to cast it again at fourth level. Fourth level? Mm hmm. Okay. Does it get sucked away again? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I can play games too. Uh, and, I, and then I will continue to walk through the door. Okay, so you go in first. Who's behind you? I'll walk behind him. Okay. All right. Galnus, Zir. After you, child. Thanks. Right, and the four of you walk into a pitch black house. Which I presume bypasses our dark vision. Oh yes, it's magical darkness. Yes. <clears throat> um, Clovis, can you roll a perception check for me? Yeah. 
Um, that's ten. Okay. Um, cool. So, uh, as you walk in the house, all of you hear the <laughs> door slam behind you. Uh, you are in total darkness. Uh, Unless yes. you don't hear anything. What's that? You don't hear anything. I will reach out. Um, so I'll start taking a step forward. And um, uh, Zir, Bosrek, Clovis, right? Mm-hmm. Um, let me take a look at something. Um, okay, uh, I don't have really have anything that can uh, deal with the uh, the magical darkness. I will, uh, Zero, I'll, I'll grab your arm lightly and you then will put reach forward, and your hand will pass through solid air or just air. Can everyone roll initiative for me, please? Uh, All right. wait, so I can't see them, you can't see them, and when you reach forward, you don't feel anything. Sorry. My power is very finicky, and I, I swear my, my power is a VCR. <laughs> 22. I think we're just not there. Yeah. Then I wouldn't see you, technically. Um, you don't see them. You, yeah, you don't. Oh, no, that's what I was saying. I'm looking forward. Do I? And I was like, I, I no. So you were correct. You asked me their marching order. That was their marching order. You didn't ask me if you saw them. Oh, fairness. Okay. Um, and I see nothing within 60 feet at all. Not yet. That's what I needed the initiative for. Uh, 17 on my end. We don't have okay. we don't have tokens. Yeah, I got a nat 20 for a 21, but I can't. Okay. I can't put, put it anywhere. Wow. This music is so settling. I feel so settled. So Zier has a 21. Do you guys have I'm 28. Oh, 28. Sorry. Yours. That 21 is the wisdom save. Yeah. So I got a 28 for Zir. Uh, Quedon isn't here. Galmas, um, what I was actually, yours? Can, I, can I ask something here? Because this is uh, actually pertinent to what's happening. Tell me happening. your initiative and then yes. It's a 17. Um, and this is why it's important. I can sense them at, with, within range. When they walked through the door before Zir and myself, did they disappear off my radar? Not until you walked through the door. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, Clovis, what was yours? Uh, 21. Okay. Did not 20s on initiative matter? I never... No. Okay. And Big number, that's Osric, all. Osric, what was yours? 20, 22. Okay. Cool. How about we roll initiative for the house? Not Monster House. Yeah. Well, at least the house should have negative dexterity, so that should help us. <laughs> Hold on. You'd think that. This is the nimblest uh, house you've ever fucking seen. No, yeah, no. I'm, I'm expecting to get my, po my pooper poked here. All right. So. This mission is going to begin with Zir. Now, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give a warning, and I'm going to give a warning every few minutes to the people in the chat. This is going to be the most fucked up, upsetting, and unsettling series of sessions going forward. Be ready for that. If anybody needs to tap out, remember your signs. People in the chat, it's okay if you need to tap out. I I have the lines and veils of my players. I promote safety over anything else. We have spoken about this. We've talked about what's going on here. They know how to stop me in a scene. 
I would like to so, point out that our Queden token changed because of the scary nature of uh, what we're doing. I love, scary the, I love the Queden token. I'm so As someone who scary. plays Pokemon Unite and has been murdered by a Gengar multiple times, it is especially frightening to me. Yeah, how haunting. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Zier. Yours. Uh, you walk through the door and something feels strange. And you reach forward for Bosric's, um tunic and you can't find it and as you turn to look at Clovis you are in total darkness and then you hear tick, 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 of hooves on pavement and as you turn back around in the direction of the hooves you see Tannis under a full moon you are alone in an alley Oh, this isn't real, and I have nothing to be afraid of. This isn't real. Um, you, ah, uh, yes, dwarf, do what you need to do. Um, you hear a voice say, there she is, get her. And behind you, you see three guards running out, um, and they have crossbows. And one of them draws the crossbow and fires. And you hear it whiz through the air, and it impacts with your shoulder. And it burns, and it sears. And you've been, you've been stabbed, and you've been hit before, so you know that feeling. Yeah. Um, you take 17 piercing damage. Yo Okay. And then uh, you see two guard. You see the arrow in your shoulder, and you see the blood welling up down, and it's kind of marring your cloak. And the three guards still have their crossbows trained on you, and they run after you with man catchers, which are those big, like, hooks. Like, they're like collars on the end of poles with yeah. spikes on the inside so you can't move. And they're running at you with them. <laughs> um, she'll start running. Does she recognize the alley? Right. Yeah, uh, these are streets you've trailed multiple times before. Screwed. Okay. Um, and you run for uh, you don't know how long you've been running, but you know you run, and you finally lose the guards, and then you hear um, a you hear a call. Is it death? Help! Uh, and you recognize the voice of Leif. This isn't real, this isn't real, this isn't real, this isn't real. And she's going to try to, like, grip her hand and, like, put it on her shoulder and is hoping that, like, the ghost Leif that's with her will connect with her hand. You don't feel anything. Um, roll a wisdom save for me, please. Yeah. Is and this as you a can probably spell guess, or other magical effect? Is she within yes. ten feet of me? <laughs> Absolutely not. She that's is on a, another plane of existence. That's a great question, though. <laughs> Trying to get that info. Uh, I rolled with advantage, but I got a net one on one of the rolls. Oof. Yeah. Unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so. I still have my inspiration, though. You can use it. Can if I like. cancel? Can I use that to cancel it out? Because it is inspiration, yes. Yar. Roll again with advantage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a fourteen. Okay, not on that one though. Okay. Yeah. Uh you don't spear. You don't feel the spirit, and yeah. you hear a voice. Um. Say, that's right, Minotaur. Scream for her again. Jesus. I want her to see when I burn your fucking eyes out. <laughs> see her, please! And you hear the sound of of the searing something pressed against flesh and just an unearthly scream. I uh, just, hey, hold on, hold on. And I'll, um, I'll go, I'll go where they are. You round the corner and you see a guard holding Leif by the horn. 
Life is the Minotaur, right? I got that right. Yes. Good. Uh, holding life by the horn and holding a bloody poker hot from the forge in their hand. And Leif is screaming and holding an eye socket and you can see blood leaking out from between their fingers. And you... This guard has to be something like a Goliath to hold a minotaur down. It's a, it's a younger minotaur to be fair. He's but yeah. big. This guard yeah. is big. And uh, Leif is screaming and he says, Good. I wanted you to see this. And he takes the poker and he jams it under Leif's throat through the bottom of her mouth and through her head. And then he drops her to the ground, snaps his fingers, and Leif's body catches on fire. And you can hear the screams of Leif through her mouth, which is stuck shut, or through their mouth, which is stuck shut. Mm -hmm. And it hits you physically. Yeah. And you now take... 30 psychic damage. Okay. And the guard draws a blade with flame, and you can see as it ignites his face, his face is twisted and distorted, and half of his face looks like a Goliath with the tribal markings and everything, but as the, the sword ignites the other half of his face, the smile goes way too far up the head. And it's only for a second. And he says, that useless captain couldn't catch you, but I'm going to put you in the ground and I'm going to display your hooves so everyone knows the penalty for fucking robbers. Run, little satyr. I love the chase. Leif screams finally subside. And the guy, the guard, reaches down, and you see his hands glow the same way yours do when you cast Lay on Hands. And he says, no, I'm not done playing with you yet. And you hear breath return to Leif's body, and Leif begins to scream again. I'm not, I, I'm... I'm not giving you what you want. Fair enough. He takes the sword, turns it over in his hand, and drives it through Leif's shoulder blades, and then pulls it out, dripping with blood. What's your name? I have to chase you. My name is Death. Yours is stolen. This filth on my city will be washed clean. I'm so glad that useless fucking orc is dead. My city will be clean in his absence, and I will wash the filth away until nothing remains. And I think I'll save you for last. Run back to your whore, mother. And then the guard turns and walks down the street. I thought you were going to kill me. He ignores you. So what, am I just stuck here? Hey! And she's going to shoot him with her short bow. Okay. Roll to hit. 18? Uh, he barely registers as he turns around and bats your arrow aside with his sword. Every time you attack me, it's just longer. I'm going to keep your siblings alive while I murder them. Tell me, which one of them you think is most fond of their skin? I'm trying to add a new rug. Then he turns and walks away. Fuck this. Um, I was them safe. Yeah, Zir's gonna go down to her her knees for a second, and just like she's like breathing through her teeth, <laughs> trying to like this isn't gonna get to me. This isn't gonna get to me. Uh, a wisdom save in general for the scenario, or against a spell or other magical effect. 
It's a spell. It's technically a spell or other magical effect. Okay. Twenty. Nice. Yeah. You hear another scream, but this one is of rage, not of pain. As you hear um, Gwynthalia's voice. Come on, you bastards. I won't be so easily put down. Um, um, shit, <laughs> and she, I, I, I think she's paralyzed. I really don't okay. think she knows where to go or what to do. Okay. I think she just sits there for a moment. All right. Um. You hear another thunk of a crossbow bolt. And you feel a crossbow hit you between your ribs. Not your ribs, sorry, your shoulder blades. Yeah. Um, 25 psychic damage. She's down. All right. That will be the end of that scene, then. We will shift to the next one. Clovis, you're in the dark. I am. And you hear a voice say, Well, 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 you do have a strong will. This will not do. You are so dangerous. And casting so many of those naughty little spells. I'd like to introduce you to someone. I'm afraid I'm indisposed. Oh, but I think you'll get along very well. Her name is Veronica. And you hear the clicking of wood and then a shing of something metal being drawn. Um... Will a 30 hit you? Yeah, DM, I think it will. <laughs> you feel five blades rake across your chest, and you hear the this little <laughs> <laughs> of a little girl laughing as blades rake across your chest, and you take 28 psychic damage. Okay, uh, can I use my reaction? Oh, it wouldn't help. Um, you said 28? Mm-hmm. Um, that said, I think Clovis would still use his reaction, uh, not knowing that it wouldn't help. Um, so I, I will pop my, uh, spore power. Okay. Um, you hear another clatter of wood and, um, another, um, something jumps up and rakes across, uh, your leg this time. Um, I'm assuming a 28 hits as well. Yeah, it does. All right, that is 16 slashing, reduced to 8 for your spore power. Okay. This is cheating! And then you hear the... of... of a spell being fired. Okay. Uh, that will hit. Uh, you take 22 fire damage, as for a brief second, the darkness is illuminated by a firebolt that smacks you in the chest okay uh i'll i'll like uh he'll he'll go down to a knee and say hello my name's clovis ever done an introduction before you know who i am clovis alwarian i am lisabeth nalosier queen of nightmares Firstborn of the God of Nightmares, Shoaten. And I know who you are, Clovis. I've seen what lurks in your lusting heart. I've seen what leaves behind your sleeping eyes. 
And I know what. Queden wants to. Oh, you two have been naughty, naughty. <laughs> So I'm scared. What next? Fear is not enough, my amor. I need despair. I need you to understand how utterly outmatched you are. Uh, I'm going to try and cast Intellect Fortress again. Okay. Uh, as a third level spell this time. Okay. Um. She, um... She says, you know, I'm going to let you have that one. Uh, Clovis will rise to his feet after that. <clears throat> All right. You've got me here. Clearly, I can't get out. What do you want? I want to play. How about a little wager, Clovis? Not a gambling man. Surprising, I know. Well, you could just die, but I don't think you want to do that either. Take my wager and I'll kill you. It's up to you. Terms. There's no real terms. I just want to know your opinion. Neither one does when wins or loses. And at this point, you see the woman in the purple dress with the blacked out eyes walking forward. And even though it is magical darkness, you can see her perfectly. Mm. Uh, I think Clovis sort of assumes his defensive posture you want my opinion? I'm listening. Which of your friends can I kill first? Whichever one you want, I guess. I imagine you're strong enough. But they're so strong too, Clovis. They're fighting so very hard. And? and I want to know who you think will last the longest. Uh, 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 Galnus uh, um, or uh, Quedon, if I had to choose, I suppose. Galnus is uh, good at Blocking hits, Quedon can heal, so I, I suppose he could extend his suffering. We are right not to pick the satyr. So much bravado for one so small. We're working on it. She smiles and fades into the darkness. And I'm going to move to the next scene. Bosric. You lose sight of Clovis as he walks into the house. And as you turn, you see nothing. Just darkness in every direction. And then you hear <laughs> the laughter of a little girl. It's laughter you recognize. And as you turn to, in the direction of the laughter, you see your sister, or at least the back of her, running around the corner. It is a beautiful sunlit day in Tannis.
So I suppose we're not going to have a conversation. All right. What are you talking about, big brother? Her head peeks back around the corner. Who are you talking to? Don't worry about it. Okay. And she skips over and she reaches out for your hand. Damn his sentimental heart, but he'll take her hand, even though he's fairly certain it's going to hurt him. Um, so she takes your hand and she, you know, in that little kid way, starts to lead you around the corner. And the streets are longer than you remember. But she's taking you somewhere that's clearly very important to her. I'm going to ever so slightly edge the blade of uh, Final Promise out and just touch the blade. Uh, you don't have your sword. You're not carrying any weapons. Why would you? It's your day off. I know, I know this isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know Boz if you think he doesn't carry weapons on his day off. But yeah, now he now he officially knows he is walking to it, probably walking to some form of death. But he has no choice but to go forward. No, Bosric, you remember you never carried your weapon on your day off. Obviously. Don't tell me what's true. Not in this world. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I'll keep going. Um, so you're walking for a little while, and um, your sister kind of slows down. And she says, Big Brother? Hmm? Why did you let me die? And as you look down, and she looks up to you, half of her face starts to peel away. Why were you such a fucking coward? And you take... 22 psychic damage. You couldn't be brave for me. You can't be brave for your friends. So what's the point of you, Bosric? I'm in hell because of you. You're in hell because of whatever lives here. No. I'm in hell because of you. If you had died like a proper orc, we could have gone to Valhalla together, but no. You had to be the big, brave hero and run off into the woods like you always did. You abandoned me at every turn, Bosric. Roll a wisdom save, please. I will indomitable. Okay. Seventeen. Okay. Nothing to say, or so verbose before. But then what is there to say? And she squeezes your hand a little tighter. What do you say to the sister you damned? What do you say to the mother you left weeping as her eyes melted from her head? What do you say to the family you abandoned? To die and rot in a city you don't give a shit about. And she draws a dagger and stabs you in the stomach. <laughs> you take 20 psychic damage. I will second wind. Okay. Where 
is my second. There it is. Where's my D10? Plus 14. Okay. The vision of your sister vanishes. You find yourself in a dark forest. But you remember walking here. You couldn't bear to be with your sister any longer, and you needed some time to clear your head. Got here a lot faster than you expected to, though. Out of scientifically morbid curiosity, is this the same woods that led to the path to the, uh, to the hamlet? Or is this a completely different woods? Completely different woods. Neat. I mean, it's the same woods, but the path that led to the hamlet isn't there. And gotcha. it's dusk now. I presume I still don't have my sword. Or any weapons. You do have your sword now. You're in full armor. I'm gonna pop. So I have, I have uh, Final Promise? No, you have the sword that you had when you came in. Okay, so I have pre-Final Promise. Yeah. That sword. Penultimate Promise. Alright. Penultimate Agreement. Cool. <laughs> um... <laughs> uh, I don't know what to do, honestly. Uh, you hear the childlike laughter again as your sister once again runs by and deep into the woods. I will um, if I pop a, u a use of fighting spirit will it be active until I make an attack um let me look at fighting spirit uh, and let it's you see end of current turn but this is weird nebulous time that I don't know fighting spirit in that case fighting spirit would last six seconds all right well, it'll give me 10 pit points anyway. Huh? And I need those. I guess I'll keep following. Okay. Um, you follow her, and uh, she you get to a clearing, and she runs back. Basric, Basric, I found the most wonderful place. Will you go with me, brother? She grabs both of your hands and she starts jumping up and down excitedly. It's getting late. We should we should go home and then oh, come please. back tomorrow. I, I promise I'll go home. I just want to show you. Hello? It's getting late. She kind of like no, we don't want to worry we don't want to worry mom and dad. You know how dad gets. Yeah, I know, but and it's so pretty when the sun sets on it. I just wanted to show it to you. You've had such a hard time. I know you're trying to catch that little satyr girl, and I know you're going to do it, big brother, because because you're just you're just strongest dog there is. But you've been so stressed out. And mom, mom and dad have noticed it too. But you're right. We we can go back home. It's too dangerous in the woods at the dusk. I understand. We'll see you tomorrow. Robus? We'll bring Kor and Val to. <laughs> okay. 
and is that something what's your saying perhaps? walk out of the woods um yes because you have not made your how many wisdom saves have you made since entering this is the, house? the third oh um, since since what Sorry, since this... entering the house uh this will be the second okay this will be the second then go ahead and make it yeah uh 22 okay um this isn't right this isn't right at all you're not in the forest with your sister your sister's in hell you're in the hamlet everything snaps out and you are surrounded by darkness again do we have a conversation now you're not awake Oh, I'm just not surrounded awake. by darkness. Oh, just... You're not out of it yet. You're just okay. not being actively damaged. And I actually think I'm so sorry to do this to you, Dwarf, but I want to give full credence to Galnus's hell. I'm going to call the session here. We will have a session next week, and we will start with Galnus.